Welcome to another episode of Guys We Hugged. It's the anti-hugging podcast. We don't, we like hugs, but we also give them sometimes too freely. And then we say, stop hugging everybody. Welcome to the show. YouTube is lightening up. Uh, they are lightening up the the terms and conditions. So it's like seven seconds. So you guys can, you know, if you're, if you're listening to it and you're like, I, man, I miss, I miss them saying the hard F. Don't worry. We'll get there. We'll get there in just a couple moments. I'm Corinne Fisher. I'm Christina Hutchinson. Welcome to the show you want to email us it's sorry about last night show at gmail.com today's subject line help lesbians hate me hi corinne and christina i've been an active listener since i was 18 and i'm a luminary subscriber thank you you have helped me discover things about myself that i probably would have taken a lot longer to figure out without the both of you and i'm eternally grateful now please do what you do best and tell me where i'm going wrong also Minute in. Fuck. Well, it's it, now, good. You, now you took it away from us, Mike. <laughs> I'm 24, <laughs> female, and a lesbian living in Oklahoma. Oh, Oklahoma. Sorry, girl. I have been single for over a year now and had been casually seeing people from March 2022 to August 2022. In August, I decided to take a step back and really heal from my previous long-term relationship and learn more about myself. It was the best thing I could have done. And after a lot of therapy, I finally decided to start dating again. I've been back on apps for about a month or two now because uh, there really isn't much uh, any other way to, to meet lesbians in Oklahoma. Mm. Yeah, I imagine it's pretty bleak. Now I've been on a few dates with a few people since my return to the dating apps. Prior to January of 23, I've never been asked out on a date by a woman. I feel this is due to the underlying misogyny in the lesbian community where women feel more masculine, uh, um, where women feel the more masculine of the two needs to make the first move and initiate any kind of romance. Mm. I love planning shit. Don't get me wrong, but I like to be appreciated every now and then and take a back seat. Mm. Uh, I've got, I got back to the apps at the beginning of the year and it took about a month before a girl finally asked me on a date. The date was fine and we went out on a few dates after, but there was no real spark, which is fine. And I've been on a few dates since with different women. I'm very direct with things. I want to, uh, I things I want. So I explained to everyone that I've been single for a while. I'm just trying to put myself back out there and I am not looking for anything serious. And everyone's told me the same thing, but they always break things off after the second or third date because they think I'm looking for something more which is frustrating. Yeah, I'll say I apologize to them for coming across that way, but I clearly would never want to make someone uncomfortable, but I have to ask them what made them feel that way because I want to break the cycle and solve my problem. I either don't get a response at all, <clears throat> excuse me, or they tell me that things are moving too quickly for them. This seems very unlesbian. Yeah, I was going to say the same thing. Yeah. Things uh, always move quickly with, with lesbians. Uh, yeah. I haven't had sex with any of these people and I only kissed one of them. So I'm really at a loss as to how I'm moving too quickly for them. Is this just the new go-to phrase for I'm not interested or am I doing something wrong? You the probably have a thirsty energy, I'm guessing. Yeah, that's the only thing that I can think of because nothing you've mentioned so far feels like it would be a turnoff. The only thing I could come up with is most people are not treated well or respected unless someone is trying to get into a committed relationship with them. So when I feel, when I comfort them when they're anxious or had a bad day, when I encourage them to go for their goals, they have when I ask them more thought provoking questions than what's your favorite color. I can see how that may come across as romantic if they are not used to that sort of compassion in any other setting. I mean, maybe it's that, but however, those are all things I do for my friends. So for me, that is coming from a place of compassion and not romance. I specify before a date that it is a date and I ask them what they're looking for before, uh, before asking them on a date and they are on a dating app. So I struggle to believe that they do not realize what they are getting into. To top it all off, uh, everyone is just so boring and they cannot hold a conversation. I have so much I could talk about when it comes to myself. I have hobbies like rock climbing, painting, collecting oddities like taxidermy and bugs. I play multiple instruments, including the piano and drums. Fuck yeah. I have a passion for my job and the company I work for, Hot Topic Store Manager. Fuck yeah. Uh, the list goes on and on, but my point is, how do I meet other women who are at least somewhat aware of who they are as a person and who are interesting in dating? Well, I mean, how do you meet people like that in general is the question I think we've all been asking 
thing forever. <laughs> like it's not like a woman specific thing. It's right. people. All I want is a casual sexual relationship with an androgynous woman who is somewhere between 21 and 30 years old. There's is, a lot of specifications. In who that is as big of a freak <laughs> about oddities and weird things as I am. Okay. Who has specific. an appreciation for mindless reality TV, who likes working out and is actively taking care of themselves, who has tattoos, Do you hear yourself? who has passions and who is emotionally in depth enough to simply ask me a question about myself. I have a very specific type, but I just know what I want. Yeah, me too. But that's why you got to wait longer. Uh, anyways, that's I appreciate right. you guys. I'm sorry for the long email because I love to talk about myself and any advice. Maybe that's the problem. Yeah, that might be the problem. Um, <laughs> any advice you can give would be very much appreciated. I've included pictures of myself as well. Thank you. We appreciate that. You're super cute. Um, yeah, I mean, it's also like you the, come the, on. You probably come on too strong. Yeah, I, I'm gonna guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's my that's my that's my educated guess based off of your email. Because if you're if you come into it going, this is what I want. This is who I want it with. And yeah. these are the list of qualities. Even if you don't say that to the person, the energy is going to be there. Mm -hmm. I also feel like even you you mentioned that you ask people what they're looking for before you even go on a date. I know you're you might be doing that for the right reasons in that like you want you, you want to specify that you want something casual, but I think it's giving uh, the opposite energy. When you're asking, normally people who want something casual don't ask, what are you looking for in a relationship before you even sit down and have dinner with this person? Yeah, first. it feels it's like a lot. Much. It feels heavy. And so, I, yeah, I you're say, asking too many questions. Like, yeah. I'm, I'm annoyed already. Yeah, I would say go into these dates just being curious. And that's it. Like drop, drop your other requirements and just experience the person and go from there. No, you're, you're not going to forget your requirements. And you might be surprised if you're, if you're more open-minded to the type of person, like maybe the love of your life has no tattoos. Yeah. And, and they don't give a flying fuck about taxidermy. But you know what? You have you can potentially have a bond with this person that will move mountains or have a, have the sexual casual relationship that you are looking for. Yeah, and I've also never heard of someone who wants a casual relationship, but the person the needs to have all those qualities. Right. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. not right. casual. That's, that's a lot of qualities for a fucking wife. Yeah, yeah. my God. Yeah, yeah it's like lot. it's it's like so. If you're having a, ca a casual sexual relationship, why would you be engaging emotionally so much? It, seems, it sounds like you want to like a best friend who you can have amazing sex with, which is just a relationship. You're putting the cart before the horse. And where when the really the thing you have to do is just go on these dates and experience the person and take them in and then use your discernment. Yeah. You're coming into it with too much, too much pre-planning. Yeah. Yeah. You're being a real woman about it. Yeah. And then you're, <laughs> and, and then you're, and then you're kind of just like, well, you know, you're, you're like saying things fizzle out after like, you know, two or three dates. But then you're saying that you're giving them like these complex pep talks like you would give to friends. It's like, well, no wonder they think you're moving too quickly. If I was getting like life advice from someone I fucking met two or three times, I would be like, who the fuck does this person think they are? Yeah. You know, it's like, it seems like, Maybe you're like you don't understand the the boundaries for someone you've only gone on a date with a couple of times. Like yeah. you shouldn't be treating them like your friends that you've known for years. That's yeah, you don't odd. know them. That's peculiar. They have to earn your respect and earn your trust. Yeah. You don't just hand it to them on the first date. Yeah. And I think anytime someone writes an email where they're like, I'm doing everything perfectly and it's everyone else's, everybody problem, else's problem. I'm yeah. guessing it's you're the problem. Yeah. There's only one common denominator. Yeah. And it's you, girl. Yeah. Um, so I think you just really got to chill. Yeah. It's, it's going to do light years because it's going to affect everything about you. It's going to it's going to affect the way you walk into a room, you know, and so and that energy is more inviting. Um, less is more. Less yeah, is, it, it less is. is. And it's always more. Yeah. And as somebody who, who, yeah, it's, it's a hard lesson to learn, but boy, it'll serve you throughout the rest of your life. Mm. Um, and on that note, come see us live. If you are listening to this on Luminary the week that it comes out, I am in the Vancouver, Canada area, uh, Vancouver, British Columbia area, rather. I'm performing at the House of Comedy, headlining March 16th through the 18th, Boston, Massachusetts, April 14th, 15th, Edmonton, Canada. I'm going to be at the comic strip April 20th through the 22nd in Detroit. I'm so excited. I've never been to Detroit ever. And I'm going to be headlining House of Comedy April 28th and 29th. Philadelphia Helium Comedy Club. I'm recording my debut stand-up album May 11th through the 13th. And then also I have a Patreon that you can go to. It's patreon.com slash Christina Hutchinson, where you can get voices, um, episodes of my solo podcast, The Voices in Our Heads. I read a lot of 
self-help books and it's a lot of just internal monologues about um, how complicated my inner dialogue is and I barf it up on a mic and it's lovely. You can also listen to that podcast for free anywhere you get your podcast. There's 89 episodes up um, and I do group therapy in quotes. I'm going to call it just like a, I got to rebrand what I'm calling it because I'm not a licensed therapist. So I don't want to invite you coming to the tables talking about certain things that I don't have jurisdiction to tell you talk about. But um, up to four times a month, I do uh, a Zoom where you can all hop on. It's just $5 a month and we talk about whatever's going on in your life. And if you want advice, I'm pretty good at giving it. So I will do that. Um, five bucks a month, patreon.com slash Christina Hutchinson. And Dublin, Ireland, I'm coming to you April 3rd. It's a Monday at Whelan's. Uh, tickets are already over half sold out. So please make sure to get them ASAP. Tell your other Irish friends, just anyone who likes comedy, really, just let them know. Uh, I'll be there. And then my best friend, uh, Dr. Thomas Whitfield, who is a licensed therapist, will be there and he can give licensed uh, therapy question answers, uh, which is exciting because I normally don't have that at uh, my disposal, but you you will. So this it's a free sesh. I mean, within reason, reasonability because he does uh, he makes bank. So anyway, uh, very excited to see you guys there. The tickets are at CorinneFisher and of course you can listen to my solo podcast without a country uh, that is on the Gas Digital Network. We talk about the news from the perspective of the right and the left and everywhere in the middle. It's very fun. You'll learn stuff. Um, and I, if there's anything I've been learning from comedy audiences recently, it's that very few people follow the news and it's um, it's uh, disheartening. It's not, you need to know what's going on in the world. Just a little bit. It's important. I promise you. It affects you. Um, all right. So that's that. And you can sign on to the YouTube at uh, Without a Country Podcast. Just subscribe to the channel. It's been growing nicely and I appreciate it. So, yeah. And if you're not following us, uh, us on YouTube, it's at Guys We Fucked Without the You and Fucked. That's our YouTube and our TikTok and our and our Instagram and our Twitter and all the fucking platforms. I'm at Christina Hutch. I'm at Philanthropy Gal. And there we go. Mike's at Mike Coscarelli. Yeah, that's right. He was he was in he was in his head Woo-hoo. for a moment, so we lost him. I wasn't sure. If I looked I was over and you were dreaming. I, no, I'm here. You were daydreaming <laughs> about better days. <laughs> Sorry about Lots that. To go coffee cups. Uh, well, yesterday we were all the, yeah, the yeah, to go cups. Yeah, the to go cups. Well, yesterday <laughs> we were all in a group text watching the Oscars. That's right. Uh, it was n- nice uh, for me to take my uh, tally of uh, men thanking their wives. Another year of men thanking their wives for endless support and encouragement and for them accepting neglect for years while the men followed their dreams. So that's always a beautiful moment for me that I like Mm. to celebrate every February or March. Mm. And then women, you know, women get on stage and they have to say things like, you know, don't let anyone ever tell you you're past your prime. And the woman's like barely 50. (laughs) If that I couldn't, I didn't even can tell. So that's good. That was just a nice reflection on society. Always. I always appreciate that moment. Um, The only person I remember like really thanking her husband was Jamie Lee. Uh, Curtis, mm-hmm. but her husband is fucking Christopher, Christopher Guest, Brass, right. who's I mean, uh, what a G. Uh, direct, like, who's the reason I went to film school. Right. Him and Michael Moore are the reasons I went to film school. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that made me chuckle, you know? Yeah, it is. It's funny. I mean, uh, Jamie Lee Curtis, um, she's great. She's awesome. I'm, I, I, I kind of didn't realize that she, no, the there's no butt. butt. I hear a butt. I just like that, that yeah, movie Tony says, but. I didn't love that oh, movie. And oh, this, this is, is a topic Mike of getting conversation. On his, okay, so okay. I didn't see the movie, so okay, I, I can't speak to it. I fucking loved everything, everywhere, all at once. It was such a beautiful movie. Experience. Mike is the only person I've heard who doesn't like this film. I'm I've not, never I'm heard not. really being bold. I put it. I put it. I put it on. I put it on Instagram. And oh, you said your DMs exploded, but you met a lot with, of people. With agreeance? Yeah, a lot of people were like, what? "I didn't like it either. I didn't get it." Well, you know, I didn't get it. I didn't get it. It's about wormholes. It's a fantasy movie. Like, there's. It's not like. It's not. There's. It's not supposed to be relatable. It's just like talking about like the, now I gotta watch the, it. the span why, of one's life has why? these intense moments why is it moments. not supposed to be any, like re- le- relatable it, I mean it's about wormholes it's about, about time traveling it's about like it's about and like it's about making you think if you could go back and redo your life or redo these moments or redo the partner that you chose like when you have a partner and if you wish you had another like there's it's, it's about been a regret right. <laughs> it's been a minute since I've seen the movie but so it's it, that it, plus kung fu Kung Fu, I guess. Yeah. I mean, there's, I there's, there's parts of it, but like, um, 
Oh yeah, I just I was so touched by that movie, and I did not expect to be. I knew it was like a like a sci fi type movie, and it's usually not the, not the genre that I'm interested in. Um, so yeah, I, read, I looked up the synopsis. It says when an interdimensional rupture unravels reality, an unlikely hero must channel her newfound powers to fight bizarre and bewildering dangers from the multiverse as the fate of the world hangs in the balance. Okay, so maybe you just don't like sci fi. I honestly don't really like sci fi either. No, I love sci- I love Marvel movies. I love sci fi. That's Marvel. It, is Marvel's sci-fi. different. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a, a different. I like Marvel movie. movies too. Like for me, like the reason I didn't like Nope was because I went in to watch a horror movie and they gave me a sci-fi movie mm-hmm. and I was like, this isn't a fucking horror movie. It's a right. sci-fi. And it, so yeah. had I gone in saying I'm about to watch a sci-fi movie, right. maybe I would have liked it's it. It's like when you take a cup and you think it has water in it, but it's really like Sprite or vodka, and you're like, even though if you yeah, like yeah, Sprite yeah. or vodka, it doesn't matter. But if you know going in, it does yeah. it does adjust your expectations. Well, That's, the, yeah, the that, thing that stinks about it is I really wanted to. I went into it excited. I was like, everybody's huh. saying this movie's awesome. This Did is that like- was your problem. So I stopped. That's why I stopped reading um, synopses yeah. for film yeah. because I was constantly disappointed. Now, I mean, if it's in the case of Nope, where you're just going to give me the wrong fucking genre, right. I can't help that. <laughs> right, right, you right, know. Right, right. But uh, yeah, I, I actually and 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 my movie experience has greatly improved since then. I, I the same for plays too. I don't yeah. look at. It. I think people are doing too much like research Prep. ahead of time. Yeah. Uh, and I, li- I understand we all have limited bank accounts, limited time in the day, but it's like, you know, sometimes I just I just go on a feeling or if, if enough- someone invites me to something, I just say yes. Yeah. yeah and if enough people like talk about a thing I'm like okay I want to see it but I, I've actually been doing that too like I saw a bunch of plays lately and movies that I just did I had no idea what I was getting into and it really allows you to just experience the thing did you watch uh, how many of the other Oscar movies did you watch uh, oh god I watched The Whale I'm okay. so glad Brendan won oh yeah. my god I just find Happy I feel him. like he's seems just, like a nice guy he seems so awesome. sweet yeah. just so oh my god his spe- oh god and he's a great it, broke actor. My, it broke he's... open my heart his thank you speech yeah but there is an interesting thing coming in mean, and Almost every like um, uh, or over like I'm talking about like obese, uh, you know, per- person in the public eye that I follow had a real problem with that film yeah. and like the depiction of. But I mean, like to me, this is like it's about one guy's story. There's very few people who, number one, are like 600 pounds. This is right. a very specific, and you know, shows on TLC. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah, like right. this is not that. You know, it's I don't know. More, and, yeah, but I it, think did, that, it did make me think, though, because anytime every type of person who has actually lived an experience is like, eh, doesn't like it, thinks it's like demeaning in some way. I go, well, I haven't lived this life and, you know, they have. So I have to take some of what they're saying yeah, into sure. account, at least. But I mean, it's also, be, you know, they it's it's based on a play. So they were criticizing the actual play, the play right, yeah, um, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, script. But I haven't seen the play. So, yeah, I don't know. My, my my whole thing with the Oscars, this was the year where I feel like I've watched more of the movies Same. than in the last couple of years. Mm. Um, and I don't know. I, I didn't. It's just weird to me that that everywhere, everything always, whatever. Everything everywhere. All Did you once. think it was the best movie of the year? No, out of all those movies? I, I didn't. It, it didn't move me the most, but I really, I really loved that movie. I, I really loved it. As I said, I, saw I was tar. I was like, Dah. yeah, yeah. It's okay. I was Cinematography's great. Very upset that RRR wasn't nominated. I haven't seen that and, or heard of it. I oh, never heard of that movie until the Oscars. Because it's a, it's a, it's a, well, it's not Bollywood, but there's a lot of different sections of. Indian filmmaking yeah. is so fucking good. Yeah. But like it, your it review awesome. of it, Mike, makes me want to see it. Because like whenever somebody's moved by a movie, it doesn't matter what the genre is. That to me, I'm like, all right, I want to see it. It's one of the, it was one of the best movie experiences I've had in years. And it's, wow. it's, it's completely in, I think it's in, uh, to, uh, there, it's an Indian language dialect with a T that I uh, I can't mm. remember, even remember, but it's on Netflix. Uh, it has everything. It's like a it's like a it's kind of like a romantic comedy. Nice. It's also a musical. A it's numbers. also a wild Tele- action movie. Telugu. I don't yes. I don't know how to yes. pronounce Telugu. It. That's okay. right. So the then these two. So the thing is, uh, when they did the performance last night at the Oscars, where they, oh they did the God, dance that, for it, that dance was incredible. Those aren't the guys in the movie. Do you oh, know okay. why? Because those guys are that would be the the equivalent in in India of like like Tom Cruise and Leonardo DiCaprio like doing a number live at the Oscars. It's like beneath them. These okay. guys so are this, so big. Yeah, these guys, those guys are so big in India that they are like. Do you want to do the Oscars in America? 
it wasn't They're worth not it come for out them. And do a dance. Yeah, yeah. Wow. that's fascinating. I'm always fascinated when someone is so wildly famous in one country and then they come to America. And everyone's like, we don't know. Yeah, <laughs> there's a billion people. Oh yeah, of yeah. course. There's so many people India in India so much- that they're just like, yeah. fuck it. We don't care. We're gonna keep being the biggest stars and good here. Good for them, yeah. as they should. Honestly, that's as what they I should. When I went to Romania, I got all the uh, tabloids there, and I didn't know any of the people featured mm. in their tabloids. And I just kept asking our tour guide. I was like, what's this person's deal? Because yeah. it was like, it's like cover. Everyone knows them never seen or yep. heard of this yep. person in my life. <laughs> this person wow. cannot walk down the street in Romania. Yep. Fascinating. Wow. It's awesome. This is so fascinating it's to so, me. That's yeah, it's cool. so sick. Everything's like a little microcosm. That's yeah. great. I love it. I love it. I love it. I um, love Top Gun. Oh my God. I, just, I watched a lot God, of movies this these. year. Fucking loved Top Gun. Um, but it's it's interesting. Like the movies that were, the movies that came out this year that were all nominated were beautiful stories mm-hmm. and well told and just, it was so exciting to go to the movies this past year, but God damn, the Oscars are up their own buttholes. It's so hard. Well, and they brought this up a little bit as far as like um, animation and comedy not being respected, but I have to say uh, it was an incredible year for horror films and horror is another genre yeah. that is wildly, number one, it's it, Hollywood should have more respect for horror because profit margins are the mm. highest in mm-hmm. horror because the, a lot of times uh, famous people won't do them. So you're making so much more profit off of horror films uh, and it's an interesting point. Uh, yeah, I mean, in film school, we were we were told your first script should be a horror script because it's the easiest to sell. Mm-hmm. Because people, uh, studios will buy much many more horror films because people will see them no matter if a famous famous person is in them or not. And actually, we have I, I think horror is, is on its way to being respected. Number one, A twenty four has been doing you know who. Right. Yes just won the Oscar has right. been doing a ton of uh, horror films and bringing it kind of like on to the next level. And then also we, we have slowly started to see uh, famous people do horror films in the past, like five years. I can think of like a couple off the top of my head. Um, but it was like, not a thing, you know, that's why, yeah. you know, even Jamie Lee Curtis uh, was talking about like, you know, she kind of said like, I am kind of known for these genre films. She obviously she's talking about Halloween. She Halloween. was like, <laughs> yeah, she was right. like, I have been pigeonholed into the woman from Halloween right. yet. She's a household name. We all know her. And finally, you know, it was such a big deal for her to win the Oscar I because she is speech. this chick from a, a, a horror series, you know, yeah. uh, franchise that, and people respect that less for some reason, which is wild. I mean, it, you know, to me, it's like, Oh, what was the best movie of the year barbarian probably <laughs> that wasn't nominated wasn't even fucking mentioned and the fact that it's like you know sometimes one will slip in for like best costume or like best set design or something but it's like these movies are are making all these other uh drama films look like trash in comparison but they're just not respected yeah. because it's yeah. not like about the holocaust or like your baby dying too early right yeah or a mentally handicapped person like winning an award or something it's right. like yeah, yeah and it's i want to ridiculous com- one day comedy is going to be respected at the oscars because everyone loves it's the genre everyone loves well, you can kind of argue no one that hates comedy you could kind of argue that everything always whatever for sure kind of was but it's I mean, more like sci-fi Sci-fi is more the leading, yeah. the leading um, genre of the, that. The one thing I can say... There should be a comedy category. Well, yeah, it's, I know. It's it, weird that they're not. Because well, there Golden Globes has what? Best comedy or musical? Yeah, they yeah, put them best together. Best live performance So there's like a comedy. whole other category. And like those, those two things are, have nothing it's completely different in things. common. What are you completely talking about? Different things. It's, it's like old Hollywood stuff. It's yeah. like Singing in the Rain would have been considered a comedy. Yeah. And it's yeah. kind of not really. No, but it's, not, it's, yeah. it's a masterpiece, but it's not really like... It's not funny in yeah. particular. You know? And like Bridesmaids is a comedy. Right. Yeah. And but directing a comedy, comedy, I would argue, a lot harder than directing yeah. a dramatic film. Best well, in acting show. acting in a good one is great difficult, comedy. too. You yeah. Know, it, it, comedy is very difficult, and I don't really understand why it's not. Because this is the thing. All those guys get up, at, and guys and gals get up at the Oscars, and they want to be funny on stage. Oh, yeah. my God. And, and they're not. Nothing <laughs> proves and they are not. how hard it is to be funny <laughs> more than a, so, uh, than, a, than a fucking professional actor yep. at the Oscars trying to land a goddamn joke. Yep. Oh, it's Half oh, the time, so even the host, who usually is a professional comedian, is floundering. Jimmy Kimmel, I think, he did a pretty good job, even yeah. though I think he's vanilla as fuck. Yeah. Um, but of course, that's how, you know. And it was so funny because I was like, oh my gosh, no one, you know, it, 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 being a comic, the people who take jokes to work, sorry, is basically uh, people who listen to this show, young white women. <laughs> uh, you guys fucking do. I actually asked the club to unbook me um, permanently this weekend because I am done. I'm done dealing with 19 year old, like, white white women who mm-hmm. just think that they are God's gift to the world. You are not. And, um, you know, enjoy the next 10 years. Cause at 30, you age out and, uh, <laughs> have fun with that. Yeah. Um, but I, 
<laughs> it, watching like the Hollywood elite listen to jokes about themselves. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that to me was the true humor. Do you, do, there was I that will moment, say the Malala thing. That like, was, oh, I, that was gonna Malala bring... <laughs> alone, Jimmy Kimmel. Stop being so America about this. She doesn't want to fucking talk to you. She doesn't want to fucking talk. She got shot in the head trying to go to school. That was a she very... She doesn't want to fucking talk to you. How risky was that for him to do anyway, though? To just, like, serve her as a joke? It wasn't a risk I respected because I thought the joke was just fucking lazy. And I'm mm-hmm. like, now you're just making fun of this woman that, like, did so much. Yeah. And it's like... Don't don't make her the joke. Like ma- like be less. Oh, I didn't think she was the joke, and that I thought. Well, I, I, I thought just, it was just like I, I thought it was lazy. I thought it was stupid and lazy. Yeah, I mean, listen, I, I I think that like I think overall the Oscars they are they're they're tough to watch because they are so up their own ass. But you, if you love movies, it's this difficult thing where like like there's it makes it the sporting element, yeah, which is fun. But also at the same time, it's like, you know, I I picked my horses that I wanted to win this. And like, I love the Banshees of Inishir and I thought it was <sighs> really good. Was incredible. And uh, I wanted Brendan Fraser to to win. Like I had my people that I was like really rooting for. Uh, and not to say that I was rooting against anybody, but it's just it's hard because it really I understand why people that aren't either in an industry that's like adjacent to the film industry or show business or something like that, why they would be completely disconnected from all of these famous people sitting in a room kind yeah. of like, it's kind of gross when you're sitting yeah. there, you're like, and it's funny because it's like, I never thought it was gross when I was an outsider to the industry. And it's now that I'm in it more in the industry that I actually find it to be gross. When I was 16, it's all I wanted was to win an Oscar. Yeah. Listen, and please, I still would like still to win do. an Oscar. Yeah, yeah. I still fucking that do. That being <laughs> said though, it, it really, it's like everything. It's like all these things that I wanted when you see that, how the, uh, the inside how, of it, yeah. it's like, it really does lose its meaning. Yeah. Little things in common, that I aspired to just really meaningless um, you know when you kind of see who is getting them and how they're getting them you're like oh this is this is gross the whole yeah. thing is gross my humanities teacher in high school who was like probably my favorite teacher of all time shout out Mr. Laird um, he always said you know he had a problem with the Oscars because you know you shouldn't really be a- awarded for art he's like right. that kind of yeah. like is un- in- inherently unartistic and that always stayed with me because i mean you know at that and especially at that time when i was you know was 17 years old or whatever i would really wanted an oscar um but i that always stuck with me because i respected him so much and i was like well there must be something to what he's saying that is truthful oh 100 percent. i mean i do they i I'm assuming there probably are awards in some capacity, but like if you're a painter is, are you painting to win an award or are you painting because well, like you're expressing yourself, you're I making mean, something, you know, I, I'm never, you know, yeah. even now, I mean, I'm, I'm not doing any art to get any accolades, but I think it's like an accolade as the byproduct of, of doing something fantastic. You know, mm-hmm. it's like, I think that's, what's interesting about guys. We fucked. It's like, I was trying to become famous my whole life. And then that was the one time I actually wasn't trying to become famous. Yeah. And then, then it worked. That's funny how life works. Yeah. It? Yeah. Every <laughs> lit- literally every other thing I had done was like a f- concerted effort yeah. to become famous. And then that I was just like, cause I was too distracted to become famous. Cause I was so sad. Yeah. And I was like, okay, well, there you go. Wild shit. Wild shit. Go see cocaine bear. Did, Did you, you like that? it? Oh, I loved it. It's fucking great. Hilarious. Elizabeth Banks directed that, yes. right? I didn't know that until I saw it. I didn't I didn't know that until I went to the theater. Uh Colin was like, Yeah, Elizabeth Banks directed this. I'm like, oh what the yeah. fuck? Like I love her. That made me respect the movie even more, but it was really good. Like it was funny. It was hilarious. Yeah. It was hilarious. It had it was so entertaining. You really lost yourself in the movie. It was it was interesting every every second of the movie I was engaged it's in. It's a real and story. Yeah. 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 And it's a hilarious story. I it's a it reminded me of like, oh yeah, this was like a great go to the movies just to get fucking entertained. Yeah. You know? Not think about your life. Yeah. Not that because that's fun too. But there's also this great part in in movie going. I I'll never stop going to the movies in a movie theater. It's one of my favorite things to do. Um, there are some Bear movies delivered though, in every way. Like you're saying, there are some movies that do feel like homework sometimes. Yeah. Where you're like, I got to watch this because I know it's going to be meaningful. Like I feel that way about The Whale. Which That's I how The Whale felt for yet. me. I was going to yeah. say, I was like, I, 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 I like 
pla- had it on my to-do list for like three days yes. before I was finally, like, cause, I, cause I just knew it was gonna be such Heavy. a fucking yep. emotional investment. Yeah. And I was like, I can't, that's also how I felt about the one on Netflix was like Marriage Story. Oh yeah, oh, that one. which I'd never watched for that reason. I put that off for months. Yep. If you if you just I had put a that breakup, off for months. watch A Marriage Story. It'll make you so happy to not be in a relationship to be honest. was, I was so nervous to watch it. And then like, I didn't think it was that, it didn't upset me that much. It was exhausting. I was just like, oh yeah, this is like a real, I, I, you know, I, I guess- It made me happy to be single. I think because it, maybe it didn't upset me that much is it's because that's the way I see relationships to begin with. So I was like, yeah, this right. is accurate. Right, <laughs> right, right, right. It was so exhausting. It was yeah, just so exactly. exhausting. But that's exhausting. what I'm saying. Like if you're like in a, going through a heartache phase, it makes you go, oh, I'm so glad I'm not in this anymore. Cause like when, when you're in a romantic relationship, you just like, you take shit out on each other. Like the, the way a romantic relationship can get gross entangled in the end. I know not all do but the way that some of them do you're like oh i'm happy to be alone yeah but that's the thing sometimes you just want to go to the movies and see a bear high on cocaine uh, yes and, and i, be I get that yeah. well no trail i haven't seen a trailer in years that got the crowd going like the cocaine bear trailer <laughs> yeah was, i mean the subject matter is pretty People fucking were fascinating fucking amped there when was, this came out there were so many moments in that movie where you're like oh shit like and i love that yeah. i love that reaction to a movie i was genuinely surprised at so many points it was so, and Isaiah Whitlock was fucking great. Yeah. Oh, fucking Lehman I Entertainment love him. alumni. Isaiah, uh, yeah, he's an amazing so happy. person. Yeah, it was just there was cute little storylines weaved in, and it wasn't. It, there was no moment in the movie that I thought was fake or forced, even though it was about a bear does cocaine. Yeah, it rocks. Go see it, man. <laughs> Highly recommend. <laughs> wow. All right. So, oh, how are you doing? I'm. I'm all right. I'm all right. Yeah, going good. Yeah. You mentioned you wanted to talk positive. Oh, talk yeah. About I don't think on this one. Okay. You want to do the bonus? Maybe. I don't know. I probably, I don't, it's kind of like, I don't know. No, I, I sh- yeah. All right. Talk about a tease. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, hey, yeah. if you want to listen to the bonus episodes, you got to be a well, luminary subscriber. We release two a month. I mean, basically, it's like people should need to stop acting like assholes and yeah. a- acting like my life is your life and then I'll talk more freely. I mean, right. this is the bottom line here. Right. You've chosen this for yourselves. <laughs> I'm, and I'm sick of it. And you know, I don't give a shit. So we're done now. Um, all right. So, uh, do you have anything you want to well, share? Well, yeah, there was a, I'm like, I don't know if I want to share it with this because it's kind of unrelated to the movie topic. It was just an interesting, I'll, I'll share I'll share it here. Um, it's, not, it's nothing personal, but um, you know, on Instagram, I'll save these posts every once in a while that I'm like, oh, this is a good, this kind of succinctly put, um, describes a phenomenon that we all, you know, a lot of people have experienced, but it words it in a really interesting way. Um, and it's just, if, if anybody out there listening um, has a pattern of becoming infatuated with unavailable people, I know uh-huh. it's a pretty popular one. I'll listen up. Um, yeah, so <laughs> I'm not going to name the Instagram account I found it on because it was like stolen from somebody, but it says um, Eliz- uh, Elizabeth. Uh, or Elizabeth, Elizabeth, E L I Z A B E I H. I don't know how you pronounce that. Elizabeth, B, uh, Karina Coaching is the is the, what's uh, watermarked on the bottom of these posts. So that's who I'm assuming wrote it. But anyway, so I'm gonna I'm just gonna read. I'll read a couple of slides from this. We become fatuated, infatuated with people who are unavailable. Uh, and don't or and or don't choose us because we have a wounded inner child who is trying to uh, to get attention, connection and love uh, that were not met. Uh, these needs were not met. OK, this person probably English is not their first language because it was written. I don't this is written a little weird. But uh, this person we fixate on is someone who uh, to our subconscious or inner child reminds us of the environment we experienced as a child where we did not get the love, attention and emotional availability we needed as a child. And several things here are at play. And this is where I thought there was some value in this information. So I'm like, oh, I wish I saw this post when I was like 24. Uh, we learned to associate love with uh, with unavailability and longing rather than having so when someone mm. is unavailable it feels familiar to what we know as love mm. you actually associate associate that feeling of longing with love this is because um because the way this person is showing up mirrors the pattern of emotional unavailability that you experience with your caregivers we have a repetition a repetition compulsion to keep repeating the same patterns that match our wounds in an attempt to finally get what we didn't get in childhood uh, from some someone similar to your parent in childhood 
childhood, if you did certain things and performed in a certain way, then you would receive acknowledgement and be noticed. This made you believe that you must work for love because it wasn't experienced as something freely given. And so there's there's about like 10 slides in this post. So I just wanted to read a couple. But because uh, I, I was looking through our inbox and there's a lot of I saw a lot of people uh, interested in someone who couldn't give a fuck about them. And so um, it's a common problem and I've certainly experienced it. So I just wanted to, you know, give some vocab to maybe some of the stuff that was happening in your life. Is, Mike, do you have anything you'd like to Does share? Does that resonate? About that? Yeah. No, just in ge- in general, because it seemed like you had a little something on your chest. So I just wanted to mm-hmm. also get it off? extend that offer to you. Uh, no, I mean, like, I, I think that... There you go. I, I had a I had a nice moment of closure. It's not a nice moment of closure, but I had a moment of closure with somebody that I was romantically involved with who I felt very strongly about and thought was going in a direction that was more serious than I than it became. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, you were basing that off of like valid reasons. It wasn't like delusion. In my mind, I was led on a little bit um, based off of some of the conversations that we had had and a lot of the patterns that we were following as two people in a romantic situation and i was upset about it for a while there was a reason uh that i kind of hadn't really thought about it for a little bit but then it you know a couple weeks after we stopped seeing each other i was thinking about it more and i was getting more uh, angry about it mm, and yes, doing yeah and it always I just, makes it so much worse it does yeah because like i i usually go i get sad more than i get angry yeah. So for me, it Same. was Same. Maybe, no, it's, a, maybe it's a Jersey thing. It could be a Jersey thing. Well, no, thing I think or, you guys are just you know. more in touch with your feelings because I think <clears throat> anger really does mask sadness. So it's like you're just more like willing to feel the actual feeling. Yeah. They're like they're cousins. They they definitely yeah. it's like it, it's it came from a place of disappointment and that made me sad. But then I think there was like a level that eventually started feeling a little more. I don't want to use the word disrespectful necessarily, but I just got mad and, and I knew that I wasn't really going to get a chance to express it to her because we had kind of, we were losing touch, you know? Yeah. Um, and I sent, I, I, I tried to have a phone call that didn't happen. So I ended up sending this long text message expressing my feelings and, uh, it, you know, I think it did lead to closure at least, uh, for you. For me, I mean, I think for her it was closed already. Oh, yeah, I don't think she did. Yeah, it was closed. <laughs> right. she, she didn't need closure, but you did. <laughs> right. But you did, yeah, and I it did. probably felt like important for you to get that off your chest and not carry that alone. Because that, yeah, you could talk to a friend about it. You could talk to a therapist about it. Cool, but telling the fucking person how you feel, I think, there's a lot of value in that. Yeah, because I think that uh, you know, a lot of the times these situations end for me. If it's ended by the 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 woman, I think a lot of times I I end up going like, no, it's cool. I get it. Like it's all right. Like it, like I kind of coddle them in a way where they're really kind of you know i'm the one that's ended up ending up disappointed even if it's for a valid reason yeah so that's the thing it's like it's It's not like like, what do you do with that right and it's not like this person's reasons weren't valid it's just more like it it's so i understand it's not like i didn't understand it's just like i still felt i still felt like i was led on in a way and i still felt like this was going in a direction that like it sort of ended in a huff abruptly and that felt a little unfair based off of like where things were going. So it's 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 this weird line that you have to walk where you feel like I, I, I was trying to be as understanding as possible, which by that notion, I was trying to not be mad. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, oh, it's my complicated. MO, this thing's happening. Sure. But then I was reminding myself like you're allowed to be mad. Like this thing doesn't work out for you. Yeah. And it, it it doesn't, it doesn't matter if it's, if it's like for a specific reason, like you could be mad about it. And I think that was very freeing to at least be able to put that out there. And, and also it didn't, it didn't, the, the reception of it, I didn't love necessarily. So that made it easier too, because yeah, I was yeah. just able to be like, all right, just well, give me more reasons that this isn't right. going to work out. Like legit ones where I'm like, yeah, you can't forge a connection with right. this, this attitude. Well, so. it was interesting because like your, your situation actually made me think a lot about like, the concept of being led on. And I think a right. lot of times it's like the woman who feels like, well, not, not, not necessarily. Actually, I think, I think a lot of the anger that men feel in relationships actually is about, um, you know, feeling led on. Cause like in that scenario, it's like, 
I mean, I've been both parties, but I am definitely more often the party that you're mad at currently. <laughs> like, and so that's why it was interesting to have a friend going through it and yeah. in my head the whole time going, yeah, I would have been that other party. And, and it's hard because it's like, what do you want when you're, if your feelings for someone who you once were interested in pursuing a long-term relationship with turn off. And for me, they do turn off quite suddenly. Yep. And like, we all know you're allowed to exit at any moment for any reason, yep. we, even if it's a marriage, whatever, obviously there's like, you know, if there's other people or things involved or houses and stuff, you know, there's a smoother way to do it than, right. than other. Um, but it's like, what do we owe someone when we want to jump ship? And it got me thinking about that a lot. And I, and I don't know the answer, What's the courtesy, yeah. but like, you know, for me, like I, you know, I, I recently uh, jumped ship on something that I that, that I had never agreed to. But I also like I have like a very flirty personality. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And so sometimes I think like and, you know, I love like an underdog. So a lot of times like it's sometimes I'm dealing with people who have never been like shown like this is fucked up. But like, I don't know, like human and compassion before. Yeah. But it's like how much of that is is my it was so, so it's like it's like but that, that's why that's why for? women are cunts you know yeah. also because anytime we do show a certain amount of you know compassion it is often interpreted because of how women are presented in the world as like sexual or romantic when it could actually just be like being a human being and i i, I considered all of those things i mean this was why this i don't was doubt so that difficult. you did yes yeah, I, I like the reason why this was hard was because uh, uh, on the i i haven't it been in a situation with somebody where it, it ended poorly in a really long time and I think that like the fallout of, mm. of what I was going through with this person in my mind up until a certain point felt like it was extremely uh, uh, cordial. You know, yeah. like she she had helped me with something that I that I needed that she had like a specific thing, uh, like expertise on uh, like weeks after we had kind of stopped seeing each other. And it's not like we weren't like talking every day and we weren't being romantic when we were texting each other or whatever. But like she would text me about that thing. She came to help me with it in person. And it was like fine. It was weird seeing her because I wanted to like be with her romantically. But like so I didn't th I didn't think that we were on this this in this territory where like I couldn't get her on the phone to talk well because right. she knew that you that you wanted to talk about i think yes. i think had you wanted it had she you know you wanted to talk about something like work related i think she would have called you back yeah. but i think she knew she didn't want to, that it was going to be maybe. back into this heavy territory and she didn't want to answer it because again like yeah. something i recently left it's like this person wanted to talk about it so extensively and at a certain point i was like i'm going to put a cap on this right now because i feel like i have given you the amount of time uh talking about this that the seriousness of our relationship deserved yeah. and it's over now. And so, and so I think I have to, I have to say any other conversation you want to have about this has to be with friends or a therapist. I, I think I've given you enough because yeah. some people will just talk something through. And, and, and also what people don't understand is like, if there's, if you are, and I don't think this is you, but like, if you are hoping for this person to one day change how they feel about you, talking something to the ground until you feel completely, this complete not closure gonna is not going to make them any more attracted to you. And I think oh, no. nine times out of 10 is going to make them a lot less attracted to you. That's certainly how I feel. I agree with you. And that wasn't my plan with this at all. It's just literally like, I, I think that there were circumstances that were happening that didn't really allow me to express the hurt that I was feeling because I didn't want to be a distraction. That was also you. Her. So I think that's also like you maybe don't like I've never met a man who's like so fucking accommodating when I'm trying to like pursue my dreams. So maybe be less accommodating. Well, I think frankly. you're I think you're right about that. Yeah. And I think that there was also part of like and I'm, she's going to listen to this. So whatever. But like, hey, girl, I, hey girl how you doing? <laughs> you sounded really nice. <laughs> yeah, you sounded cool. She or like is very in nice. interesting. Not ni nice is such a throwaway word. You sounded very interesting. She's both. Like, she's yeah. both nice and interesting. This is just unfortunate how this all went. Right. But, you know, 
I, it, I don't feel, I don't think she's a bad person. I just right. wish that, I wish we could have. No, I mean, quite frankly, when you were telling me this story, I was like, uh-oh, I don't know how to handle this as a, as a friend because I'm kind of, I I would be her. She pulled a real me. Yeah, I get yeah, it. For sure. For sure. I go, I go, oh, this is how I would have handled it. Right. And, and <laughs> well, to, to what you owe somebody, like what do you owe somebody when you're no longer interested? I think that the, the least that you owe is just communication, but just like a little. I, but I just think just it, a little. I think it, uh, I think it really does depend on how far down the road you are with somebody. Right. And, you know, this is a person who basically, you know, it, when we were together in person one night discussing like the future of our relationship seemed to have bought into the fact that we were going to be together. And then like a couple days later, like kind of out of nowhere, decided no, I changed my mind. Well, that's what Frank you know? did. That's why I was so upset. You know, he literally told me I was the one. He wrote me a letter every single day I was in Israel which, on like a 10 day right. trip, <laughs> like a handwritten letter. And so it's like, why do people do that? It's like, are they convincing themselves that they want something that they don't want? Because I've heard of stories happening like this where somebody will make like such grand gestures and then pull out. Because I think it's like, it's like there's, there's the, okay. So I think a lot of people want me as like, like I'm a lot of people's dream girl, which people are going to love. Cause it's just adding to the conversation. <laughs> she I, she. But, but on a day to day, I am not a, fu- a good functional partner for most people because I'm not going to do any of the things that you need in a functioning relationship. <laughs> yeah. I'm a fantasy girl. I'm not a real, I'm not a wife. I'm not a, re- I'm not a functioning b- b- partner. And I agree. And I agree with that assessment. And I've said this before. I think it was even last week or maybe the week before, like, I do think there is something I, I do think women are very used to being in relationships where men kind of are like shitheads and don't pay attention to them and give right. them like the stuff that they need. And I think I am just a little bit too accommodating. Like this person was. was yeah, because if it feels it starts to feel feminine when you're too accommodating, because that's something we associate with women. Right. And so it's not masculine when men do it, even though it's we, even though we constantly talk about how men are and assholes we want that. Right. and we want people to be kinder. You so know? I think I think, you know, I've been I've been calling myself two month Mike for a while now. <laughs> But yeah. like, it's like two months of having a guy that is, that is pretty attentive and like considerate to your feelings and, and all that stuff and, and your schedule and your aspirations. It's too attentive. I yeah, think it's it seems too attentive great in, in, the, person. in the first two months. I think yeah. it's too much too soon. I think that's a kind of, they have to earn that attentiveness. Yes. yes. They have to earn yeah. it. So that's what I'm trying to so get be better at. So a little at. colder up top. Yeah. And, and even the, the Less way available. This, yeah. The way, the way that this situation sort of dissolved the originally was also that like I was telling you guys before we started recording like the the way that it was broken off was sort of like all right like I need to go through this and I have I need to like I I'm, I need to be single for like whatever reason and I was like I get it yeah I understand she's like I know I know you get it because you're the best and like you're and it is like a bit patronizing yeah and that started that I think was one of the things that eventually made me more kind of mad over time where it was just like it's this messaging that does make you kind of feel like you don't have the right to be upset because you're disappointed over mm. something. Mm-hmm. And it, yeah. it, and that this was always, I go through this all the time with like, like what it means to be like a gentleman or have class. And in mm. my, in my family, like, like the thing yep. that always comes up is like, if you're the one that kind of takes the high road, then you're the one that has class or you're the one that like you're a, you're a true gentleman for kind of like be, being accommodating and the other person is is like not but that's the thing if you're the How person the that's always accommodating i don't know there's kind so of like, different things i got into this, this fight with my grandma during covid what this is like a weird story but it was bad it was like a blowout fight <laughs> really a blowout fight i knew my I didn't even know talk. grandma's fought it was my grandma is a fiery fiery lady wow she's from brooklyn you know respect. she's like 80 yeah. years old and she's She's an old Jew from Brooklyn and, yeah. and like, you know, nice. so it's feisty. I wouldn't want to cross her. Oh, she's, she's out of her mind. Yeah. So we got into this fight and it was bad. We didn't talk for like, like the, the whole summer that summer. <laughs> and it, but it, it's not like we didn't talk because we just didn't talk. We didn't talk because we were you, not speaking. To yeah. Each you're other. like, I'm not fucking talking to this <laughs> yeah. lady. Nice. So, so, uh, her birthday is like a couple days before mine. And, uh, at the end of the summer, I, I, I ended up. I saw her right before, like some, at some point at my parents' place and it was like very weird. And my mom and I kind of talked about it and I was like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm just going to, I'm just going to apologize. Even though I feel firmly that I was in the right and that I shouldn't be apologizing, but like she's 80. What am I like? 
like I'm going to take this to the grave right. that I didn't talk to my grandma. She's going to take it to the yeah, grave. She right. That's who's taking it. Yeah. So my grandma was like, decide, like firmly not going to apologize. Like whether oh, it was stubborn. because I was a kid, the kid in the situation so for funny. whatever reason. Um, and I apologized. And then my mom called me after and was like, you know, I'm very proud of you. Like you're a true gentleman. You have class. Like you took the high road, <sighs> but this is the thing. If I'm the one that's always taking the high road, I'm it's the exhausting. one that's always getting fucked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. So it, Admitting it, you were wrong if you don't feel like you were wrong, in my opinion, is not taking not the, the high road. road. It's, it's taking the pussy genuine. road. Right. Yes. And, and like I did it basically to be accommodating. I don't necessarily regret it, but that was the first time I realized like by being uh, the, what I've been doing. Right. That it's, it's like a, a version of kind of like conflict avoidance and people right. pleasing. And I didn't want to do that in this situation because I really felt hurt. Um, I don't think this person is a bad person. I would love to know what this fight was about. We can't say With it on my air. grandma. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it was a mask thing. It was literally like, it was, oh, oh yeah. it was about oh, COVID mask. Yeah. 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 It was the first, it was like the first, <laughs> it was like the first week or two of COVID. <laughs> the amount of fights over COVID masks are hilarious, but I'm like, is it really about the mask? Uh, it, it was about, it was about just sort of like, it wasn't necessarily about the mask. It was just about, it was two perspectives of so how like to she, behave. She thought that you didn't have to wear it. Hers was Lucy or goosier than yours. No, she came up to me. So this was literally the first like, couple she's weeks. She's the one who's going to die. So why right. do we even care that much? So, yeah. so if she also, doesn't wear her, her don't opinion wear it. doesn't affect her. At, your opinion doesn't affect her action. No, no. So this is what happened. This is, this is why it was a fight. It was because <laughs> I was out in Jersey and this was the first couple weeks of the pandemic. So yeah. I knew some people that still had it. I wasn't sure. Like we didn't, know yet yeah what, like what the fuck was going yeah, on yeah i thought that and I, you're a I, hypochondriac I'm on right. top of it totally yeah. and i i thought like i had friends that had it and i was like i was like are my friends gonna die like what's i didn't know jesus you know it was it was literally that i would early have loved on. to be inside your head during the first weeks of covid <laughs> it honestly was, it was a, it's a dark wild place. ride <laughs> <laughs> so so we i was out in jersey i stayed there for like a month when when uh i was going through the breakup where we had to break up the apartment and everything yeah. So uh, I was out there and I was meeting up with my grandma and my aunt because it was my other aunt's birthday. Mm -hmm. And we were, remember when people were doing those like drive-bys? Yeah. Oh, yeah. They were like driving by with balloons yeah. and stuff and honking. Yeah. So we're all in this together. Yeah. What a fucking ridiculous, embarrassing it was, time. It was for such a weird God time. damn America can be real dumb. <laughs> so we're, we're in, the, we meet up in this parking lot of this church, like across the street from my, my aunt's development in Jersey. And, uh, I told my mom, I was like, I'm, I'm, I'll go and I'll do the drive by, but like, I'm, I'm not getting out of the car. I'm going to wear a mask. Cause again, this is like, we didn't know. And ah, Michael, you fucking pussy. Basically. So yeah, yeah. we get, we get there and my grandma That's comes hilarious. out and she's not wearing a mask and, and like, she's talking to my mom or whatever uh, up at the, uh, in the front of the car. And then she comes back to the, to the back of the car where, where I was in the back and she like, she Jesus goes kiss. up against the window and she goes, ah, Michael, I'm not wearing a mask. I'm not wearing a mask. Ah. And she's like doing this, <laughs> like making fun of me. Yeah. And I, I was, old people were like, I've made it this long. Yeah. yeah right. Fuck it. Let's go out on a bang. Yeah. And I was like, get the fuck out of here. Like I, I, I was like, I was like, get out of here. Like, what are you doing? And uh, she took that. I didn't think of it really at all after that. And you then, say get the fuck out of here to your grandmother? Yeah, I did. <laughs> okay, okay. I didn't so even the tone. I didn't word, realize that I said get words. the fuck out of here, but it was like a knee jerk reaction. Hilarious. Right. So my grandma apparently she didn't like, like that. Yeah, she didn't like that. Nope. And, and my family, they they like fester. Matriarch. They, yeah. I told you we didn't know. My my aunt Mary died last year. We didn't know for like three months because she what? was mad at my grandma and like. <laughs> oh. Oh my god! This is yeah. such a Jersey story. Yo, oh, family yeah. fights are deep, yeah. man. My mom called the me resentments like, that happen in families. <laughs> like it's, it's hard crazy. to make them vanish. They do not forgive. Oh my, god. my mom literally called me like 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 uh, sometime in the beginning of the summer and was like, "All right, so your aunt Mary died uh, four months ago." <laughs> Nobody told us. <laughs> wow. She literally LOL. took the beef to the grave. Wow. Jesus. Wow. Hey, yeah. stand by your convictions, I yeah. guess. So this is this is a uh, this is what I've been thinking about and dealing with over the last like week, I guess. Yeah. yeah. That is an interesting topic to ponder because it's like how what do we to what do we owe? But do you think that we lead on? Yeah. Based off of what I've said, and yeah. obviously I, I haven't showed you the text, so you don't know like every word I've said, but like do I you to think feel I was, for what you wrote? Yeah, we can do, never, <laughs> we can fill in the bones. Do you think I was within reason <clears throat> for 
uh, to do what I did. I got to be honest. I thought, I thought your therapist, can I talk about what your therapist said? Yeah, sure. I thought your therapist's advice that like you are feeling mad. So you should tell her uh, was very interesting and that not me the, the wrong advice way. that I would have given. That me the wrong Cause way. to me, it was kind of, it, to me, it was kind of like, it was just like, I don't agree with the advice that whatever you're feeling, everyone else has to take in. I don't agree with that advice at all that she gave you. And I was, and that's why I asked you, is she a woman or a man? Cause it felt like a man giving another man advice. No. And I was very surprised that a woman who I'm assuming is straight yes. gave you, uh, gave you that advice to unload more of your anger on another woman. I thought right. that was very well, she, weird. It, it wasn't like, it wasn't like that. It wasn't like you should like you're angry, go take it. It was more just, like if you if you have feelings that you like are still sitting on that you haven't expressed then when you, you told me the that. story i was like oh and you did you text and then when you said she didn't pick up and then you sent her text. a long text i was like Ugh. i didn't i it's didn't i think you had a similar reaction i, I, yeah. felt, you I felt the therapist it, advice was weird right it was weird yeah. yeah i thought it was weird because the reason i thought it was weird because it's like it's not going to get this chick to come back to you but that's like, not the that's like, not the she goal doesn't like you like the goal was to make you feel better right and i understand that but i i just don't but it's like is it i couldn't i couldn't decide for my head whether it was selfish of you to do that to her but then it's like well you don't give a shit about her in that mm -hmm. moment you, it's more for you so it is inherently selfish so I think therapist's mm. advice a lot of times like um, even you know to me it, I think it's too narrow because mm. I, I understand that they're supposed to see you in your in your brightest light um, but I also think therapists and part of the reason why we're not maybe getting along as well as a society or like we're worse than ever is because we're all in therapy and our all therapists are all telling us we're right we're our feelings are valid and 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 kind of prioritizing us and so we're just all right. walking around the world prioritizing our our own uh, uh, emotional baggage even right. more than we previously were because yes. this actually reminds me a lot of like you know i had my one of my exes you know was in therapy and and you know, even though I was like the recipient of the negativity, I thought some of the advice she was giving to him, quite frankly, was wild. So much so that I that I told him that you can go tell your therapist to fuck herself. Yeah, mm. because I really felt like that. I felt like her. And, and, I, and listen, I am not a therapist, but I feel like I am coming at it from uh, a different perspective than the, you're an average person because of doing this show right. for ten well, years. Some yeah, people's behavior course. should just not be egged on and supported. Yeah, and it's like therapists almost feel too. Oh, I can't. You they have to hold you in an unconditionally high regard and i understand that like a trauma sense where you need to feel some sort of safety to open up but other than that it's like but if you're you should be called out if you're being a piece of shit yeah because sometimes i'll tell my therapist something and it's like maybe something that i have done a couple times and she'll re will, will will respond to me too gently and i'll go did you hear what i just said yeah i was yeah. Yeah. me That's doing this again brat. i i i i go i go no i should be i i should be mad at my, myself for doing this or i should be ashamed of this behavior and right. I don't care what you say. Right. Right. And I yeah. agree. I agree with you on, on all those fronts. I do think that there's something to be said about people walking around with their own emotional self-interest in, in mind, uh, which is not necessarily always a good thing. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I, you know, the way that this the way that this all transpired, I really wanted it to be a conversation because I didn't want it to I didn't want it to be angry i wanted she just it to wasn't be... interested in having that conversation and yeah. if i put myself in her position mm -hmm. i wouldn't be interested in it either because if i moved on or it could be a multiple things happening in her head we'll never know obviously sure but if i've moved on i don't want to fucking i don't want to put any more emotional right investment in. in you sorry about last night yeah. show <laughs> Gmail. Gmail. Com. we'd love to hear your side of the story but also no, too don't, don't <laughs> if i was but also too i was wondering on her part i'm like yeah. oh if i wasn't if i wasn't proud of how i behaved then I would kind of run. I would be like, ah, la 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 la. That never happened. Kind See, of I thing. feel like I'm, uh, and that that's interesting to care because I feel like when I behave in a way that I am not proud of, uh, I run away. From I'm that. actually quite fine with saying that to other people and apologizing. Um, what I'm not good at is if a man needs to unload what I feel is an excess of emotions <laughs> on me. But why? Why is it an excess of emotions? No, no, no. no. I, I I'm not saying that yours not specifically not you, was. Not but you. I'm saying like I've been in a lot of instances, especially. Because because you know I'm always the masculine energy. Uh, my my a, a man that I dated um, uh, told me this weekend he was he goes you're the most masculine person I've ever met and I go person and I go wow. including men and he goes yes <laughs> and this is like not this is not like a pretty this this guy grew up rough um, yeah that's wild <laughs> that's really funny <laughs> and I go oh no I, I wonder if this is your first lifetime guy. as a woman. <laughs> 
<laughs> I don't think so. But we've had like yeah. many male lifetimes. Um, <laughs> I think to me, me I think the thing that made this situation different was yeah. because I was being considerate to the fact that while our our situation was ending, yeah, she was in the midst of of of. She was going through a process for a, a, a an exam yeah. that was extremely important and stressful and very stressful. And I didn't want to express these feelings and distract her from that while it was happening. Well, so, and so you talked about her patronizing you. I think it's a bit patronizing you, yeah. to say that she couldn't handle those two things when she is an adult and she made the decision to start seeing well, you. Well, you, you seem like you were doing it out of courtesy. I was yeah. doing it out of courtesy. Yeah. She it's didn't not, ask I, a courtesy she didn't ask for and then it welled mm. up and then you got angry. I mean, maybe that, that's yeah, I've been there. Maybe. P- no, I, I, do that, I do that to myself a lot <laughs> I, where I'm like, oh, I'm, you know what? I'm going to be, I'm going to be, I'm going to save them from my feelings at this moment because they're going through something stressful and then, oh, but it never ends well. And <laughs> it, it always ends. Yeah, exactly. You always get pissed. My one wish for all the people I've dated is that they told me how they felt at the time instead of letting it, uh, it is really, pile up. It's, it's remarkable. It's destructive every time. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. I mean, all right. So then maybe, maybe I should have just done Don't that hide, the moment, Yeah, but. Yeah, because if you would have, mm-hmm. if you would have not spared her, I think that would have been, yeah. Yeah, it would have been the right move. And this probably. is not coming down on you. It's because it's kind of like you're Everyone our friend, and, you're, and and we're. It's more like we're Good invested in you. Yeah. You know, succeeding from here on out. Like, I mean, quite frankly, I mean, I'm, that's a lady sounds very lovely, but I don't care about her future. You know, right? right. Outside yeah. of just being a woman in the world, you know. Yeah, yeah. Like specifically, narrowly, I don't care about her future. Yeah, I, yeah. It's it's just it's weird. It's the first time that I've had a uh, situation like end this way in a while, especially yeah. when it had so much potential. It is weird. This every time, but that, it's the most you've let yourself uh, or maybe not at most but like I, it's like in the in the long time you haven't let yourself be this vulnerable vulnerable so of course you're going to get hurt more yeah and i i just be- <clears throat> i i obviously believed what this person said so yeah. i had no reason to think that it was going to end anytime after we yeah. kind of yeah all, essentially made it like official pretty much and then like you know a day late a couple days later it's like i take it back you know what i mean yeah like it's weird that you wouldn't just have that conversation but maybe she really felt that one way a couple days prior and then yeah something happened and yeah listen i'm not i'm not like i'm not trying the the point of all of this is not to vilify her in any way i really i don't i i i don't hold you know, I was mad about how that all went down, but I I don't think she's a bad person and I don't yeah. think like I don't have any other than the fact that now like I've had to just kind of block her on socials and stuff just that's to, for your own mental health. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I don't I don't begrudge her and like I'm uh, now that it's off my chest I feel you do I feel, feel better. Yeah, and like yeah, she went through a lot of shit and she was stressed about, you know, a lot of stuff and I don't I don't like, I, I don't, I'm not trying to make her sound like I've been involved with some women that I think are bad people. We are yeah, not, right. not just, no, but do you remember Hell. the one I was thinking about it today? Do you remember Corinne? When we start, first started becoming like friends, I was seeing that, that, that woman, Haley. Yes. God, she was I a bad I never person. Heard that name again. That was, year, that was like 10 a years bad ago. Person? I think we're, you have to bleep that, but yeah, <laughs> she was, I think she was a bad person. Yeah. And, and well, I, I mean, we I, weren't like together together, but like, I've had some bad judgment in the past. I don't think this is oh, bad I, judgment. I would say 50% of my serious boyfriends were bad people. <laughs> right. <laughs> yes. So, so I, get, I get it. The, the, to wrap this whole thing up, I, like, I don't, I don't this want to. This episode is just Mike's therapy session. I knew you needed We it. have an interview, guys, coming I, up. I know, <laughs> you'll, we'll get to it. I know that, I know she's going to listen to this because she listens to the show. Um, and. Well, that was your first mistake. Yeah, yeah I know. God, I got to stop doing that. But, yep. Yeah. Uh, yep. You'll learn eventually. Yep. I, uh, I don't. I don't want her to come off as as being like a bad person. It doesn't matter. No right? one knows who we're talking it's about fine. except for us. I know, yeah, but she's going to hear it. So the important thing is to know that it's well, like... So, so you're still catering to her feelings even after all this. Yeah. No, I'm I'm catering to the fact that I'm... Of I don't, who she really is? No, I, I, I am not. I, I'm just... I'm, I'm trying to do the safe thing by not blaming all of the problems on this situation on this person well, of course who's yeah, not yeah. who's like not a bad person it's just like it's it's, it's a shame how it crumbles. all yeah, just yeah didn't it's work a out. shame that it how that it's it worked the way out the, the way that it did. crumbles michael yeah <laughs> so bummer but bummer town baby yeah, that's that's how it went down <laughs> all right well guess what else is going down our fucking guest this week he is uh, on his second appearance on the podcast. He is a stand-up comedian. He's an actor. He's a gamer. And you've probably heard his voice in some of your favorite video games. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the show, Jeff Leach. All right, we're here with self-actualized woman and dead dad, Havard, 
Jeff Leach. Hello. Oh, thanks Welcome so much for having me on. Again. This yes. is such a joyful set to be on. And uh, I can I, I love that you're colour coordinating. We already discussed that. Yeah, beforehand. we didn't even mean to. And you didn't even mean to. You got that kind of relationship, that platonic twin relationship. Language. Twin language. Is yeah, that what it's yeah, called? Yeah. Is that the term? All right. I've learned something. It's the longest already. relationship either of us have ever had. Yeah. Well, it's bringing out my joy because yellow Good. is a very happy colour. Yeah, it is. It inspires that. You're a happy so. guy. Happy well, yeah, accent. I smoke marijuana. What are you going to do? That's, yeah. How that's, high are you right now, Jeff? <laughs> mm, mildly. I like to have just nice. a little smoke before I perform or before I go on podcast now. Oh, because I nice. find I just enjoy the conversation a little bit more. <sighs> yeah, that's great. I wish we'd worked on that like that on me. That's not. What does it make you feel? It, like, I want to be alone and okay. be a weirdo. I'm a weirdo. I say you weird stuff. I talk up in, in clothes. I talk match and in dance. cartoon voices. I talk to Kevin. I play, p I play piano a lot when I'm stoned. I love playing piano and singing when I'm That high. sounds great. You sound like a one woman yeah. entertainment for center. For sure. But I, only for me. I, if anybody else was there, I wouldn't have fun. Oh, okay. It mm. has, it's my alone time. That's good. So it's like a self-love practice for, for you. For sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah, and uh, I nice. masturbate a lot when I'm stoned. Woof. Oh, I mean, boy. who doesn't? I know. It's great. Coming when you're high is really fun. Yeah. You agree? Yeah, because it's a slightly more intense sensation, the dopamine yeah. rush. You know, your breath, oh, you can get out of breath a little bit more because your lungs are under the pressure of mm -hmm. the marijuana already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're oh, filled with the smoke. I can't. Wonderful. I've never been high on marijuana. It doesn't work on me, so... Yeah. Oh really? Do yeah. you have like a? I've done lots of psychedelics and stuff. Yeah, it just docks it out. Do they? Just something with THC is just it's no, it's a no. What's it's the drug no that gets you Corinne Fisher horny? Horny? I mean, yeah. Molly. Hawkeye. I think makes everyone horny. Yeah, yeah. Well, actually, I don't. Yeah, no, yeah. Molly, yeah, <laughs> Molly like, is like uh, you're just like. Uh, well, it makes you want to want to touch and hug and be close to those. And it feels so like about, cold, yeah. like that. I, I feel like a cold breeze is like following me around on Molly, but like in a good way. Oh, yeah, I was like, that yeah. sounds terrible. No, okay. I like it, and I like I like like the you know like chills, like mm. but good chills. Yeah, I love it. And and now the best drug is just fucking. Because you like the person, which we're all, aren't we all doing that now? I we're think all we doing, are. we're what all doing a, a person we like, isn't it? Uh, I am <laughs> no, Chris Sappy Sappy thing. Corinne, I thought you had a zaddy. I thought you had a regular zaddy. Oh, you're like two boyfriends behind Jeff. Shit, wow. Well, she had a zaddy. That I was about two Instagram years ago. For about a month. Keep up. Uh, we've 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 already done a 12 year younger guy since then for a while. Whoa. I'm good. Dated younger. I'm always like good with younger, dudes. younger. The youngest um, girl I ever dated, I think, was like early 20s or something. And, and you were. Oh, like late twenties, oh. and I didn't really, or maybe thirty, um, and I didn't didn't like it. There wasn't enough conversation. Oh, oldest, I've dated, I've slept with women who are a lot older. Like how? What are we talking? So oh, maybe? like easily thirty years older than me. Nice. When I was younger, really? yeah, yeah, and so they would now be. 68. <laughs> Hell yeah. Crush that pie. But when I had sex with them, they weren't 68. You know, they were like right. a really hot late 40s mum. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do and it. Hot late just, 40s mum deserve a little bit of young stud loving. Yeah, 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 well, yeah. You're so generous of you, really. Wow, what a gift. That was charity work, honestly. Actually, I don't know if it was. It you was work I mean, for goodwill. It was desperation to feel valid and Oh, is that what young guys are doing? Like, this all checks out. I've yeah. been doing so much unpacking. Seriously, look, I mean, you made a joke at the top that, I've, you know, I'm a self-actualized woman. Obviously, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm not. But I am definitely looking at so many aspects of what my identity is as a man, but also what my identity as Jeff is. Yeah. Where the fuck did it come from? Mm, you did know, something prompt this? Yeah. I mean, like therapy, oh, okay. love uh, it. a mature relationship. Mm -hmm. We've both had, you know, experience of that now and getting to try to, to have that. And um, just an understanding that I, I want to be, truthfully fearless in everything I do. And I yeah. can't do that if I'm putting on a front because I'm depressed or I'm anxious or I'm desperate to feel loved. So I'm, you know, sleeping with anyone with a pulse, you know, it's like yeah, all yeah, of those yeah. things are just, so anyway, yeah, that's been a good process for me. It's like versions of yourself die. Would you agree? Like you, you shed them You're and cause they're yeah. no longer needed. I like the shedding idea. Yeah. I don't know about the death because I think they inform the next stage of who you are. You don't forget or give up that part completely. Right, you right. go, right, great lessons learned, so who, you know, but for me, it's been a, a complete, just where does my uh, confidence come from? Mm. Is it real or is it fabricated mm. to protect myself? You know, why do I do stand up? Why do I want to make people laugh? Is right. it because I really love what I'm doing? Yeah. Or is it because 
that was the easiest way to get attention from parents who didn't necessarily give me the love and attention that I wanted when I was yeah. younger. You know and I mean? then you fell in love with it. Yeah. Is that the answer? What is the answer for you? No, I've yeah. worked, I've gone through it and I've worked out, I just adore telling stories. I love okay. connecting with people. Empathy is one of my traits and one of the things that I have pushed against for a long time. That's why every time I try and do stand up or a podcast where I'm trying too hard to be fucking funny, mm. it comes off like mean. I come off mean. Uh, and I realise it's uh, it's just an insecurity. So now I'm not doing that. Nice. I'm having ten times as much fun, and I think the the comedy's better. Obviously not right now. Wow, well, a very serious conversation. That's, uh, that's what we do sometimes. Yeah, I think the goal in life, like the best thing you could ever do for yourself, is just be closest to your most genuine self at all times. Yeah, and which is really, easier said than done. It's a consistent maintenance. Because all parts of this, again, look, I still wear the big grotesque jewelry and stuff, but I, now I wear That's it because I really like it. I yeah. think I like being like a little sparkly crow. Do yeah. you know what I mean? Who's picked up something shiny off the floor and just going, sparkly hey. crow. Yeah, That's yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's what I'm like. It's, it's so nice. I love I love that you dress like up because men just you don't see men who dress interesting like, yeah, a yeah. lot. And it's, this is actually quite a muted outfit. No, I know this is well, this I've is got pain. Some pink socks on. So this is your go. gym outfit. Ooh. <laughs> no, it's I, I I love it because it's just like I just like it's part of what makes me sad about men is like they just look boring. they're boring. Yeah, yeah, and it's like but half more fun. To be that, I know. If you push out that, then you're a gay man. Right. I mean, I know. You know, it sucks. Um, that sucks. But even that, you know, you've got to consider how can you become straight unless you consider whether you might be gay? Right. That's a question that most men don't even want to ask themselves. Have you asked yourself yeah, that? Yeah, fuck yeah. Of course I, I, yeah. I can look at your producer sitting over there and go, that's a nice jawline. <laughs> I could rest my gooch pleasantly that. on that chin. My balls could nestle in those sweet lips. Gobble, gobble. Mm, my Mikey. penis sits like an angry slug up on top his furry caterpillar from wow, the start. Wow, you really explored this. Well, I mean, it, that's just it. what came to the top of my head. Let's just say yeah. I'm, I'm moving fast. But there's, there, I can look at him and see he's handsome and that he's sexually desirable. Right? I can feel that, but I just don't want to fuck him. I don't want right, to be into right, him. Right, I'm right. not stimulated by it. Oh, Jeff, tell me more. <laughs> tell me more, my friend. Bro, just check your DMs. <laughs> I'm Jeff, just do you know Randy Newman by any chance? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, I feel like it always feels good to have like a good looking person and like like you or compliment you or like, want to sure. fuck you, Absolutely. even if it's not the preferred And sex. men who are scared by that, it's often either cultural, they're not, they're not allowed sure. to explore that side or that's, you know, deemed something ungodly as well. Organized religion, of course, mm -hmm. or um, just fuck Fucking this this sense of this this full sense of masculinity. And we see it like look, this fucking twat bag Andrew Tate, you know, mm -hmm. that's just being yeah. picked up by the police. <laughs> it's no, it's no, which is fantastic. Such I mean, a beautiful, so oh, beautiful, thanks, so God. beautiful. Yeah, absolutely, and so hilarious that the, the, the that Greta Thunberg the did it, and like, the organisation arrested him. Mm -hmm. Their yeah. anagram and their name, what it was, Greta. You know, just yeah. fantastic, yeah. just from start to finish. But and as a, a Romanian man as well, I'm really proud it was our boys who did it. So oh, you're you know Romanian, I mean? yeah, yeah. I'm hard, well, my mum's Romanian. Yeah. Oh, I've I've been there. It's my favorite country. That you look like you would fit very well in Romania. Everyone thought I was Romanian. You look like yeah, a crow. Yeah, and then yeah. I was like, this is. A, a difficult language to conquer. I do not know what you're saying. Yeah, but the, everyone yeah. was very nice. <laughs> so. They're cool there, and they're very sexually liberated. Seeing as your podcast Ooh. is skewed around the sexual sphere, Ooh, Romanians after dictatorship, like people go a little sexually crazy. Right? Nice, mm. and the women especially because it was such a. It has been a very kind of uh, stereotypically Eastern European patriarchal kind of setup. Do you know what I mean? Very much, woman stays at home, cooks in the kitchen, blah blah. But all these women are incredibly well educated because they have to do um, a baccalaureate before they go off to university. So mm -hmm. they study. Whilst a lot of us in America and in England, we do like three subjects maybe to go to university, or we specialize mm -hmm. in one area. Oh, like an, yeah, yeah. They learn everything like 13, 15 subjects all the way up until they go to university, specialize. So they're very bright. Mm -hmm. Wow. But then and horny. And but now, yeah, now like women are getting the top tech jobs and it's like fastest growing tech city in yeah. Eastern Europe in terms of that. So there's money and there's like it's basically like the eighties was in America. So they're all Whoa. just fucking the shit out of each other. Wow, good for them. Yeah. And I used to take part in it. It was amazing. I used to go like there orgies? every year. Yeah. I go there really? for um Ooh, tell me more. There's an event called uh, IC Fest or like Upgrade One Hundred. Okay. Uh, and it's a big tech and innovation conference. And I had friends who would be up there and every year we'd get together and we'd hang out after the event. 
event and they would just this couple a uh, guy and his fiance would invite just a bunch of friends who are all really attractive ladies. oh that's the best and they're all doctors oh. and like hot uh, doctors like fucking advertising execs and stuff like like cool fucking women yeah. all sitting around smoking and that's the only thing they smoke a million cigarettes oh my gosh the, my my the best pizza i ever had was in romania and the woman was like literally ashing into it in the kitchen when i <laughs> I, I saw her making it and i was like I, and i was like i just i was like i love this place there's no laws yeah yeah <laughs> It was it, great. It feels a bit like that, right? Yeah. Because they came out of this ridiculous oppression where, where wow. no one had anything. And now there's some affluence. Now there's some opportunity. How recent was this dictatorship? Uh, Ceausescu was knocked out of power. I mean, probably what? Maybe it's longer than that. Probably about in the 80s, maybe. Okay. Maybe okay. the 80s. Yeah, maybe yeah. it was 70s. I don't know. So, okay. Um, sorry, my historic historical knowledge of Romania is pretty fucking poor to be eh, fair. Right. I don't think anyone's going to be It like, all blends together. No, there's going to be someone like writing an angry comment, you know, she's this guy motherfucker thinks he's Romanian, but he's not. Um, I, yeah, definitely, uh, definitely had to experience a little bit of the, uh, the, the lunacy shit. that they, they now embrace. And right. it's fucking dope. That's amazing. Great is there, conversation is there anything fucking... different that happens at a Romanian recently liberated orgy that you wouldn't see anywhere else? Yeah. Like the women are very in power. Like it, it doesn't feel like the men are dominant in that situation whatsoever, which in a lot of other group sex situations in my life, it's often felt like the dudes were leading it. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, this is not very much not because nice. there's just, or, just more women to play pleasure anyway. Mm. And they know exactly what yeah. they want. Uh, They're very, uh, you, you know, playing mm -hmm. like one of those multiple drum Wait, sets. Do you speak the language or is there a language barrier? Yeah. Un putzin. Yo potso vorbeste oh, romanesh okay. un putzin. Daka yo vorbeste in chat. Yeah. See, like that's like, you can't pick up on that. It's not like you can pick it apart, you know? Yeah. I mean, it's like kind of Latin, like Latin derived language, isn't it? Or It reminds so, me a little bit of Portuguese because my best friend is Portuguese that I felt like a little Portuguese influence in there. Yeah. But I mean, I was like, I can't, I don't know what anyone's saying. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's it's just swarthy dudes trying to chat up Westerners. I mean, that's yeah. fun. That's right. <laughs> Although Romanian men, uh, they they're an interesting looking it. bunch. There's there's, yeah. there's no mid ground. There's mm. like really hot dudes. Oh, and, and then just dudes who look like they bottom of the sewer. Yeah, like they pull bells for a living. Do you know oh, what I, I mean? was in right, love right, with right. my tour guide Radu. I was. Is I love hot. I, I or he, his energy. No, no, he wasn't particularly hot. He wasn't not hot. What was his name? Bogdan. Radu. Oh, Radu. Yeah, Close, yeah. Sorry. It was. He was. And but he was like Harvard. He went Harvard educated Whoa. and like came back to Romania and like gave like vampire tours. I was like, Whoa. I love this man. It's your soulmate. Yeah. He loved me too. We got along great. What happens? My my mom was there. I was like, oh, I was first, first first what call, what did, I call it. I was like twenty one. Damn and it. he was like 45. Oh, Ooh, that would have been so hot. <laughs> but now he'd be super old. I guess so. I don't he'd know. He'd be like an old, wrinkly Romanian man. He'd look yeah. like a vampire now. Could be fun. Hell yeah. <laughs> Could be fun. <laughs> Could be great with you. Have you been watching this Wednesday, Adams? This new Wednesday? Watched I feel like the I'm whole sure. thing. I licked it, slurped it up. And it's like, she's been, people, there was, I, I've seen some conflict between people sexualizing her because she's an attractive woman and she's, she's hot, yeah. 20 years of age, I believe, she's right? Age, yeah. um, but then obviously she's portraying a much younger character. Right. And uh, I mean, do. people love that. What is this, a porn? Like, I was yeah. going to say, I was going to say. <laughs> and I'm it's, just 16, mister. Yeah. Ooh, what, do you do, what do you think? I mean, like, uh, has anything fucking changed over the last 10 years in the entertainment industry, really? Hmm. Or, it has, uh, or is it just streaming? polarized yeah, but... in, in each each direction, it's... just like politics, you know? You know, it's so interesting. I saw a play the other night called uh, a couple weeks ago called Downstate. Fucking one of the one of the most invigorating pieces of art I've ever seen. It like made me oh, it made me want to write for hours. It was great. Uh, it was a play about essentially pedophiles, a bunch of pedophiles post prison living together. It was a mm. gorgeous gorgeous play the most uncomfortable conversations which to me that's what great theater does and one of the things a guy one guy was there because he was like a pedophile to attract towards little kids acted on it uh this other guy um fucked a 17 year old who lied about her age and was in prison and he was saying he was like what grown man isn't attracted to adolescent young girls if a grown man ever tells you he's not he's lying that yes yeah, so that's not true okay i think there's a change especially yeah. if you raise a child right I, it may Do you have a kid no, but oh. I did raise someone else's little girl. Oh, and okay. she was 15, 13 oh, months oh, old okay. until five and a half. So once you've raised a small girl, mm, that'll change. 
something changes in your mind and you see anything that any woman who looks remotely reminds you of that concept of a woman mm. suddenly feels like a child right. to me to me mm -hmm. right and i don't know if it's the same for everyone who's been a dad biological dads i imagine that's that feeling is even more um reinforced you know for the, for the most part unless someone is inclined to be attracted to children which is fucking unfortunate but also yeah, fucked up yeah that's a bummer <laughs> so so also, i'm like yeah society well, well with masculinity masculinity pushes you to like think a woman is a prize but then i feel like society really does sexualize young girls oh yeah. my god it's crazy yeah absolutely but then also a lot of young women now are utilizing that fact and making yeah. incredibly successful businesses off the back of it Goddamn. so uh well there's a lot of conversation about that and like the ethics in it and and i we even we've even had someone years ago like wrote us a letter being like saying something about like she wanted she was an adult now but she was possibly thinking of selling pictures of herself as a child you know <sighs> to like kind of like right. give pedophiles like what they need but not no, but what actually they need damage is children that's what they, what they need I mean, is deep i agree with you yes yeah well speaking of willpower right we were i don't think we self talked about this. self control you were saying earlier before we started recording that women are almost taught self control kind of in an archaic it's encouraged in you yeah yeah um for for reasons so we're not like a dumb dirty slut but you know yeah it's, it's kind of a sexist foundation of course yeah. which you know but most, we can utilize it for for other stuff that does make our lives a little easier but yeah. men are almost encouraged to, are are men encouraged, do you think, to not have self-control or just not breached the subject? Is breached? I mean, look, I'm a good one to ask about self-control because I thought I had a lot of it. Um, I got in trouble last year. I called someone a cunt on the internet. You got in trouble for that? Really? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. For but, calling someone a cunt? Well, but yeah, it also... but it was a woman. I called a woman a cunt. So? But also your brother. Is she being a cunt? Well, you guys yeah, use so, it differently. So there was a lot of backstory to it. It was... Um, I uh, for two months this person been trolling me setting up different uh, burner accounts every day and telling me to kill myself or going I wish you succeeded in killing yourself oh, five years ago those, but yeah 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 it's every it's yeah. every day but it wasn't um it wasn't a lunatic it wasn't anything like that it was uh, a staff member of a content creator who I had outed as a charity scammer a year oh. earlier it was a very childish YouTube drama situation between streamers it was very I'm very embarrassed to have ever very been involved niche. in it very I niche. love YouTube drama it's fucking pathetic but <laughs> it's not dude no, you it make did, it it took so of much of my money. I had to issue cease oh. and desist to publications because I'm Fuck. an actor in a video game um, that was the video game company are horrendously or have a whole load of federal charges against them for sexism and misogyny. Whoa. You can be so, federally charged for sexism and misogyny? Yeah. I mean, like by nice. in like law, you know, uh, lawsuits for business. I mean, it's uh, one woman committed suicide. She was sleeping with her boss and he showed photos of her naked at a oh. staff party and oh. she Holy hung herself. Shit. All sorts oh, of stuff. Wow. Now, all, uh, you Life know, I don't want to get myself in legal trouble. So all of these things have yet to go through the courts and i'm not sure what the actual situation so allegedly are. allegedly allegedly Chad. allegedly but Chad's they had our lawyer. apparently there's a, a bill uh, a bill cosby room uh, these were all in the documents that have been released court documents in terms of the court case right so for them it was an opportunity to we'd already finished working together because i was too involved in the in the project i'd gone off and taken like a, an eight thousand dollar job voiceover job mm -hmm. and turn it into you know six figures by streaming broadcasting doing events charity events hosting online tournaments awesome. uh, had sponsors on board i was doing all this stuff shoutcasting esports things i, I immersed you myself the in seed, yeah. Yeah. yeah had this fallout with his content creator found out he was charity scamming exposed that he then comes after me with this setup you know mm. sends his staff member they're recording it live cut it out of context and jeff leach right. is a sexist blah 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 blah. paid a few blogging sites on muckruck uh, paid a pr company to run it on a load of things oh. did it on a friday morning because then you don't have time to respond until the after the weekend damage Ooh, already done let me write that down it's yeah. no honestly if, I, if you want to ruin someone it's so fucking easy like you know these 100 percent it, it is and yeah. these scumbags like Andrew Tate look he's a fucking pathetic human being right yeah, he, he yeah. is he is he's a, he's not a nice person and I feel sorry for young men who are being influenced by, influenced by dickheads like that because a lot of these boys are just a bit lost they don't know where the fuck to sure, go they're like what, sure. what am I meant to be masculine super feminine I don't feel comfortable in either world I want to be something between and yeah. they can't they don't know where to go so they opt for whatever seems like the easiest thing which I imagine the pressure of a lot of other boys is yeah you gotta listen to the dudes right you gotta go come on fucking this podcast and that podcast and this yeah lunatic and that lunatic you know especially little white boys especially little white boys now because they just don't know where to exist right mm, yeah. now their lives are not fucking hard in the slightest i'm aware of that being a white straight dude i know that you know privilege is still through the fucking wazoo 
But I think you don't know that if you don't know anything else. So right. if your but if life you're is, young, and if yeah. your life yeah. is hard, if you have like a, if you have like parents who beat the shit out of you and you're being told you have privilege, you're like, I can't see it sure. through my black eye. You know? Sure, exactly. And yeah. so that's that's a whole other layer. So then what what happens? Is you just breed a generation of fucking incels. Do you know what I mean? Sure. Right. Kind of course. what's going on. I know yeah, that. I play it, cool it is a white, I hear is, them. It is really is like a straight yeah. white guy thing. Like I think comics are really sensitive to things phrases that get overused yeah. or like you know tropes. But like the straight white guy thing, every time the School, school shooter you're like every time it's a fucking straight white guy yeah like, we're still we're still definitely public enemy hurting. number one when it comes but, to systemic racism and living off the privileges of it yeah. but white women also I overheard yeah, this yeah, conversation yeah. one of those overheard in New York I was <laughs> walking to the cellar and there was these two young ladies from NYU walking in front of me and one was just like oh my god it's just ridiculous Amy Winehouse was smoking on her balcony and there was like 150 paparazzi and she couldn't even smoke I'm like bitch just let her smoke like that I was like I want to hear a little bit more I, I yeah. used to know that crew, right? So I was interested in hearing what mm. the opinions of this young lady who is so far removed from that generation <laughs> thinks about him. Right. Anyway, then she goes, she goes, yeah, it's like being a celebrity, it's ridiculous. Like you can't even do normal stuff. What if you're just drunk and you're out and then all of a sudden you're just doing something normal, like, I don't know, vandalizing or like littering or like stealing from a store. Like you could get caught. And, and she that just normalized. That was a real sentence? That was a real sentence. I was like, holy fucking white privilege. But Whoa, I, that but, is privilegey. And, like, shit. And, and I was like, because she's white and she's a lady. So she's kind of even above the reprimanding in a certain way. So she's not public enemy number one. The ego of a, of a of young hot chick is hilarious. At least white men have pretended not to know they've had privilege for thousands of years. Do you <laughs> yeah, know you what I mean? Real dumb, but white yeah. girls, she's really wearing it on her sleeve. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And I've no got it here. and I love it and yeah. it's great oh yeah God. yeah yeah whereas someone black Ew. would get shot in the back of the head for the same stuff yeah. you know what I mean for the same crime it's like crazy vandalize or shoplift or litter littering I was actually the one that offended me the most yeah littering yes yo when I oh, see somebody I fucking shit. hate when I've seen litter. so many times guys it's always a guy they throw a can out their car or shit out yes, their car yes I hate uh, when I throw it out I the window I fucking speed up I get in front of them I slow the fuck down and I go against a, like I go neck and neck with another car that's going really slow and I trap them in there for like 20 minutes as nice, a punishment. nice nice they get so mad. It's also like you're in your car. Just place it on the floor. I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's, it's, it's so It's not even like when you're walking around in your car and it's you have so to carry something. It's you're, heartbreaking. You're, it's right there. I mean, just, that's just heartbreaking. A lack of a lack of guidance in it. It's lack of guidance. This is all lack of guidance and, and, and lack of respect for yourself and the world and anybody else. Yeah. Uh, but uh, so but wait. again, again, that's a privileged opinion for us to have because look, I, I don't know about all of your um, histories. I don't know about your childhoods, and I can't speak to them. Right. But you're you seem like educated women uh, uh, who have built your own opportunities but also probably saw the possibility of where you could go in the scope because mm. that was encouraged by friends or family growing up and you're now successes, right? Mm -hmm. um, Correct. A lot of people grow up being told, yo, the world is not for you, right. motherfucker. You're barely allowed to exist here. Right. Scrape by or just go and do something terrible to get some money because right. that's all you got. Go and enjoy 20 years of good life and then you're fucking dead or whatever. Sure. If that's your idea, you don't give a shit if you yeah. litter because you live. don't right. care about the planet because sure. the planet doesn't care about you. Right, right, right. Yeah, right. We're Whereas all we went, just, we've been we're on a holiday playing. to fucking Saint Tropez and gone, oh, well, isn't it beautiful? The sunset. I've we should protect this. Never all been to Saint Tropez. Well, you know what I'm saying. Whatever. But I would go. Have you been to Mexico and done some tequila shots? You've been anywhere. Only since I had money from here, not before. Never. Do you want a passport? There. Yes. yes, you're already miles ahead of yeah, so but many I know, people but it, in this country. From my own stuff, from my own stuff, yeah, not from you, my parents. Sure, I, sure, sure. I never left the country until I was like well into my twenties. Romania. You were into my 20s. Oh, yeah. I thought it was your high school graduation. No, no, no. That no, was college. your breakout trip was to Romania. Uh -huh. Oh, that's very cool. Why did you everyone, that? Because everyone goes to a fucking boring place first and I don't want to be boring and I wanted to go. I, I when, Once, I found, once I found out that Transylvania was a real place, I was like, I'm and going. And the castle. Guys. Did you go to Dracula's castle? Yes, I did. Yeah. Vlad Tepic. Yeah, it was fucking incredible. It's, it's so fun walking around. A lot of iconography, a lot of like religious iconography mm -hmm. and giant pencils. I like that. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Did you see the big wooden giant pencils? They I don't remember pencils. And giant spoons and Forks. I don't know if I remember that, That's but odd. I from wood. I uh, <laughs> no more dictator. Let's see, big and food. Do community dogs, as they call them. I yeah, love the yeah, yeah. dogs. Yeah, just dogs running around everywhere. I like that. Yeah. So yeah. how we we were talking about willpower? How what oh, was yeah, what is your relationship and self control? Like, what is the dance that you've done with self control throughout? Well, your I mean, life? look, even even that thing. So I called this person the C bomb. You know, right, and okay. got and got in trouble. You know, and it was all sexist um, remarks by actor losing him job, even though. 
quit the, so the, the funny, job and finished sexist. two months early. Well, no, it was a, it was a great PR spin for them. Of you know, course. look at us. We, we don't have anything to do with actor Jeff Leach. You know, we don't stand by any sexist or remarks. Mm. And they gave it value by making that comment because they saw a PR opportunity. It's very mm. scummy. Yeah, it is. Um, but it's the industry. And if I want to be a professional within my industry, yeah. I have to understand that that's what it is. And either you fucking get wise to that or you keep whinging about it until you're old and you're a hack and no one fucking gives a shit about what you're saying because you've been whinging about the same stuff rather than changing your situation. Right. Mm -hmm. Now that's self-control, right? But then that extends to every facet of what is not encouraging young men. Like, it, There's a reason why young men don't understand sexual boundaries because they're either not taught them by their parents, which I was fortunate. I had so many female matriarchal and female dominant figures in my life. Mm. Learning what is the right and wrong way to speak and touch a woman nice. was simple, right? But I think there's a lot of my friends who I know I've witnessed be like inappropriate and had to make a comment. Do you know what I mean? Of mm -hmm. course, my life, people who I thought were good people. And you go, well, how does that happen? I think it's because they're not taught it. They're not given that guidance, yeah. right? But it's also just not encouraged. Like we're encouraged to be uh, daring and brave and jump off things and blah, 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 and push it, push it, push it, push it. Sure. You know, whereas mm -hmm. women are taught to uh, learn how to control yourself, learn how to control that. And at the star end of it, it's probably incredibly demoralizing and quite frustrating. But in later life, I think it just allows you to emotionally develop at an incredibly rapid rate compared to us. Like just Oh, having that self control. Absolutely, because you yeah. learn how to process emotions. You learn how to have a mature response to a situation. That's not to say that there aren't a lot of women who regress. Yeah, it also but it yeah. also I think it so yes, yes that, but also then it like stops women from like taking risks or like dreaming right. big. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Oops. There you go. Yeah, and that that's why part. we're seeing more and more sexual assaults from women towards men now. That's why I get grabbed the other night in a comedy club. By oh, wait, lady. you've been yeah. sexually progress. assaulted by a oh, woman? A million times. Yeah, all, all a million attractive times. comics have. Yeah. Really? Got, uh, in Male England, comics, they yeah. were terrible because all the venues you do there. England, like, you, they're so tame. And the British nah, nah, people nah. are so like, we have, we have naughty. We have naughty. The naughty, naughty, <laughs> naughty. Don't naughty. be naughty. Very naughty, but boys and girls. I'm sure women have like just grabbed your dick. Grab my dick, grab my ass. Your dick? But then, um, how yeah, do you I've feel about all, that? I've had uh, the whole spectrum because when I was doing TV shows, I won't say which, for which network because I don't want to get sued, but uh, a, an exec producer on a TV show that I worked on definitely assorted me while I was female. unconscious. Female. When you were unconscious? In, yeah, in a hotel room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, whoa, Why whoa, Why was she whoa. in your hotel room? Oh, because we were Cosby? fooling around a little. Oh, okay. And then, and <laughs> and then, then she <laughs> kept going? No, and then and then I was, we were both very drunk. Oh, because we were having sex? Uh, ah, but here's the, here's the thing. Well, here's women the can, can tap so out we were, at we any were, time. We of were, course. We were, you know, we were drinking, we were fooling around a little, and then I said, we're, listen, we're drunk and we shouldn't be doing this while we're doing the shoot because we were still on the shoot. Mm. And I was like, Ooh, Let's, that is naughty. Yeah. And I was like, why don't we just wait a couple of days until we finish the shoot and then, you know, hang out properly in London, blah, blah. She was like, all right, yeah, sounds good. And and I, so I clothed, slept on the bed and she went, do you mind if I just sleep here though and like cuddle up? And I was like, of course. So she, I, I passed out. Yeah, and then when I woman... woke up, I was naked and she was on top of me. So that's- Wait, 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 Pretty much comatose, especially if he's Whoa. very drunk. Yeah, if you're very drunk, you Mike get a hard is dick. Enthusiastically like, nodding. We get erections His because we need to urinate. Fall. Do you know what I mean? Like it's not, it's not really right. hard. Yeah. So I imagine she, um, you know, he. I imagine she um just she probably just, stimulated me a little bit, and as soon as my dick started to get a bit hard, she put put me inside of her. Now that's Whoa. that's that's technically an assault. Now How here's the difference: is, a, is when is. I came like. Oh, I'm fucking someone. When I that that moment of <laughs> See, realization that's the came around, between a straight man and a straight woman. Absolutely. Oh shit, well, we fucking. Here's the difference, and this is what this is when it comes to assault, right? When we have to think about that concept, because it is even just in the understanding of it different for each gender. Because I didn't feel th uh, fearful. Sure. Right. I didn't go. Oh my god, she's gonna do this whether I wanted to or not. I knew I could have just grabbed her and thrown her off. Blah. blah. Although hard. I had a whole nother set of fears which was if i do that and she decides to run out of here and go he was assaulting me they're gonna believe to cover all oh, that's you. a story they're 100 because it's right. going to show that i penetrated her and all this stuff and 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 you know mm. i've definitely come across women right. who were not well balanced or who lied uh, one girl who had a boyfriend the entire time we see him go and i didn't know do you know what i mean mm -hmm. and uh, when he found out she obviously said some things about me to try and cover that you know right. so, things like that. Oh, right, so right, right. I've, and i you know 
fortunately, law, uh, uh, sorry, you know, Our detectives definition. And, and fucking tests can prove that that's, n- sure. you know. Yeah, you're right. But, but that's, that's crazy. So, yeah. Situations like that um, have made me question what relationships are, what women are, what, what my relationship to women is. I used to think I was closer to women than men in every way. And then I oh, had really? a deeper understanding. Yeah, because it was an older sister, auntie, female cousin. Right. Mum was definitely the matriarch. Dad's away all day, you know, comes home. We barely sort of, you know, have that relationship, you know. Yeah. Um, a, a Romanian aunties, million mm-hmm. of them, a million of them. So it was always women. So, yeah, that, that kind of, they shaped me, but then also had uh, opportunities to really break me as well Mm -hmm. oh wow yeah because women uh what men can do with their muscles women can do with their words absolutely and it's a little bit their actions their actions as well you know they can they can for sure but women dedicated to ruining you well i I was saying this to my friend uh, who was i talking i forget i was talking to um but i this concept like i have never witnessed two people like sisters fight sisters fight with each other i've never seen anything like it in my yeah. whole life and i've witnessed i've never i don't have a sister but i've seen it i'm like holy shit like sister fighting is the most vicious thing i've ever yeah. heard about witnessed in person physical and emotional and i'm like god damn women have this thing in them that is just more cutting than a man could ever be but then equally you are infinitely more supportive in a multitude of other ways of right. each other. there's infinitely Which is more weird yeah. That's, but that's supportive of the- like our male partner not supportive of each other until, until recently and that's a big us. problem yeah it's like my number one pet peeve yeah. is, is being being supportive no or not being supportive. Or the lack it's, of. it's it's women supporting their male partners and not other females oh oh, oh. Right, right, not right. other females I mean, yeah. yeah it's 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 ridiculous and, and, and i mean support yourself over your male partner just like or, val- or uh, maintain your own self-worth and your own self-value but yes. then it comes see that all comes down to value so that's the word i've been doing recently is going and all of this whether it was the creative that we were discussing or even sexual mm-hmm. this is how i'm capable of having the relationship i have now because it's about going what are my values mm-hmm. what yeah. are my five values and this is I'm sure a lot of a number of your listeners will have read this in a multitude of different self-help books or sure. you know how to gain success in life or get control of you know it's seven good to steps have the said. things repeated though I, yeah. I like hearing people say it in different ways it's simple like, tenets even yeah. most theology most religions all boil down to the similar tenets you know yes. similar ideas yes. it all comes from a central place right which we're all sort of in some way hopefully self-conscious enough or self-aware enough to pursue mm-hmm. the growth endless mm-hmm. growth right um, I can't remember how the fuck I got five values. Down. Five values. Yo, it was, comes back down to, to values. It comes hands. down to values. I, I won't run through mine. They're different for everyone. Oh, well, can oh, you? Can oh, you oh, I don't know. I'd be curious. Oh yeah. yeah. Well, love is definitely one of them. Okay. I, I, I desire love from others. I really value it. Um, I feel worth when I'm loved. Mm-hmm. Um, but I also love giving a depth of love to people. I, I offer a lot of myself very quickly, mm-hmm. which sometimes gets me burnt. In fact, it has done a multitude of times. I mean, yeah. you're a comic, and yeah. you know, and then used to be. You're, would you consider yourself like an an, an addict, or? Oh yeah, I yeah, because I was like, it's that. That's why I love like that. Kind an alcoholic, of energy. definitely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah. I mean, I don't drink anymore. But I still no, smoke I know weed. You, you know? I know you don't drink anymore. So yeah. I think I'll give up marijuana one day. You know, probably. Right. Um, it doesn't serve you anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Right now, it's a, 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 a magnificent, minuscule it- crutch. Because well, <laughs> I, I still need one. Well, I'm, I'm ever, aware enough enough to go. All right, I need a little something. Yeah. Before I it. smoke weed, I said an int- fucking intention setting is insane. How much that works? Okay. Like it's wild. Give me an example. What's an intention? So before I go on stage, I'm like, my intention tonight is to be my most genuine self, to have fun, and to make the audience laugh their fucking face off. Okay. Uh, that I don't. And every time I remember to say that on stage, because I don't remember every single time, I crush it. I'm like, oh shit. Whether, I, I, whether I understand it's, that. Whether it's just putting me in the right neural pathways to do what I got to do, who knows? But I uh, think it is. Yeah, vocalizing that intention, even yeah. writing it down. That's why people are so, uh, you know, on to journaling. I'm discovering all this shit that for... A that multi- chicks have been encouraged to do for ages. Absolutely. It's and awesome. also that actually even men like my... Or I don't care about chicks and dudes. Like I, I, yeah. I care about div- uh, evolved people sharing their ideas and mm-hmm. good advice. Because that's all you can take, right? Yeah. Um, and then see where you can apply it to yourself. And so that's been encouraged in me even. I've known that writing things down has a different, just a different effect on your brain and how your brain processes it, Mm -hmm. you know, by putting it out in words. I'm right now, I'm going to finish this comedy special by the end of January. Right. I'm going to, you know, Mm -hmm. uh, uh, endeavor to hit up more people for opportunities for live shows, whatever it happens to be. Mm -hmm. Or... 
you know, I'm going to be a better partner. I'm going to be more present when yeah, I'm at home with my partner. especially great for relationships. I'm gonna, yeah. Absolutely. By putting that stuff out, I know, I've known for years, but it's only now that I'm finally going, oh, rather than fighting it, I've been Wednesday Adams my entire life and I'm starting to be a little more pudsly. Maybe. Pudsley. Yeah, because he's really? like, he's got that kind of childish, like, Pudsley always had this childish kind of joy for the world, right? It's just more exciting, like, fuck it, let's give it a go. Right. Yeah, you know, even when Wednesday's going, hey, stick this dynamite inside your right. mouth. He's like, oh, yeah. You know. <laughs> and like, Wednesday's always very cynical of mouth. everything and yeah. like, I don't trust it. And I've been like that so long. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of comics go that way. Yeah. We go that way, especially dudes, especially white dudes, especially white dudes who are realizing I'm not going to be young forever. So what is my, what am I? What mm -hmm. do I, what kind yeah. of a man do I want to be perceived You've as? You've got to face yourself. What's my identity? And realizing you have choice over building that identity. So, or rebuilding it. So what are your other values? You have love. Love, love uh, 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 loyalty. Mm -hmm. I'm really, really loyal to my friends and, but I expect the same back and what I is, hadn't. Can we define loyalty here? Like yeah. what are the, we, we always talk about how I love loyalty. You gotta be loyal. Bitches ain't loyal. What does that mean? To you. Well, I've never said bitches ain't loyal. Well, I'm far too white. The and word middle class gets thrown around. From England. <laughs> like, yeah. Right. Me and Mike like, talk about loyalty a lot. It's very Jersey. I mean, it's just like having your friends back. It's right. like, like in a relationship for me, like I, I always have a rule in a relationship. Like no matter what asinine thing my boyfriend says in public, <laughs> I back him up. And then I, we go home and we and I say, never say that in public again. <laughs> okay. That's what that I was. to me is loyalty. Okay. I'm glad yeah. you added that last part because. Yeah. Um, I, I agree. Unconditional but support. But when you say, when you say yeah. unconditional support, yeah, though, you can't. I, it can't be. There has to be Holding moments. A really good friend. Anyone who knows me you. knows me. I'm never giving unconditional yeah, support. Correct. <laughs> but also <laughs> unconditional criticism, but not unconditional also, support. You can also define loyalty as being honestly critical when when the when when it arises. Absolutely. Or you saying, have like, to be with hey, your friends. Hey, you're fucking friends. up right now. And, or just say, hey, listen, look, you can do it kindly and just yeah. say, you know. I know you, what your intention is, but that's not how it's being perceived or this yeah. is going to harm you. And I ha I wouldn't be a real friend if I didn't tell you. Yeah. I think transparency is a big part of it. Like yeah. I, I'm, I'm super honest with everyone now, but or my friends, Used especially. So yeah. And uh, people can't, if they can't give me that same level of depth and transparency in their conversation, now I've got no more time for it. I'm like, mm -hmm. I love you from afar, but I don't need you in my inner circle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, and then with a relationship, obviously it's a different thing. And then, you know, with, um, with work relationships as well. Oh, another part was, uh, uh, one of my other values was, um, was creativity mm -hmm. and remembering why the fuck I create. Yeah. And I never started doing stand up or acting or writing stuff or doing voiceovers and characters for uh, for Netflix. Because Netflix didn't exist when I started doing Absolutely, that shit. Absolutely, yeah. I never did it for exec producers because I didn't know exec producers. I was just shooting stuff with my mates in East London with cameras and just putting on YouTube and stuff. It was never about that. It was always for people to watch and enjoy and laugh at. And I lost sight of that for so many years mm -hmm. because the industry takes you out of that mindset mm -hmm. yep. and throws you into how many fucking followers you got, how many yeah. people engage you with shit, what's your analytics, Anti -creative. How, who's your agent, who's your manager, who's the, boom, 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 all this shit, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Because if you create great stuff for an audience who really likes what you create and you continue growing that audience, they will help you create stuff. And um, Very true. that was my decision actually I made halfway through last year. And so I crowdfunded for a, a comedy special, a comedy yeah. spectacular I'm making. And it's <laughs> oh, horrendously like delayed. I apologize to anyone who helped crowdfund it. We are months behind. Uh, but that's because my yep. dad died and my best friend died in the oh, space of like God, three weeks. Jeff. There you go. Yeah, 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 yeah. We can, talk, we can go on. miserable, I know. And I just, just shit happened. That just made me like super depressed. And yeah, like, that you needed to I was care trying yourself. not to die. <laughs> yeah, I know. A I lot of a my lot of last year was literally exactly the same. Yeah, you get it. Yeah. yeah, and it's hard. And so and so you want to continue making stuff for people, but there's also a moment where you have to go. I need to step back, otherwise I'm not going to create anything for anyone. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll just be creating an opportunity for a funeral service to get another five thousand dollars out of someone. Yeah. So anyway, uh, it's coming though. And so and so anyway, but I did it by doing it with them. I took a chance. And people came out and they put some money mm -hmm. where their mouth is, you know, and mm -hmm. when we love what you do and we want to see you do it your own way. Mm -hmm. So now I don't need to get money from Netflix to shoot it. So it's all pretty much shot. I've got, I'm going to reshoot one thing because of the deaths and I wanted to rewrite some stuff. Mm -hmm. um, I'll reshoot that and then we'll edit it and we'll put it out. And then I'm going to release two more specials two months after that and two months after oh, that. Oh, wow. Josh yeah. Chappelle yeah. over here. Yeah. yeah. Why not? I'm just going to give people content do and it. give it all away Yeah, because that's, 
that's why I did it yeah. to build an audience, you know, you not know, for any other reason. And share it with the world. Yeah. Yeah. First, I mean, since the beginning of time, everyone, and there's obviously so many religions in this world and they all sit around like God, 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 who is God or God's on our money. God's everywhere. But I'm like, God is creativity. That is your creativity. Yeah. Your own creativity. That's what that, it, that's that fucking, you like snap in. And when you're on a roll and you get lost and time disappears, yeah. that's the most amazing feeling in the world. I, in terms of God, I've been thinking about God a lot and, uh, I, I've i become now completely happy with whatever anyone's perception is of God. Mm. I, I, I do psilocybin. Interesting. Oh. Uh, and uh, yeah. I had a, a nice little hero dose maybe uh, actually about a month before my dad died. I tried, oh. I went away because uh, I was I was paying his bills. I was doing all sorts of stuff. He had the onset dementia towards mm. the end. It was really bad. Mm. And so I needed to just go away and take drugs and cry and work out some stuff. Yep. And I took like seven grams, had a hero dose, Damn. triples. It was amazing. You put electrolytes, lemon electrolytes, it speeds yeah, up the whole yeah, process. Yeah. So I got high really? immediately in five minutes. So I was like space rocket. Oh, I gotta get some tips. I met this. God mm -hmm. uh, or mother nature or Beyonce. And the infinite energy of the universe that mm -hmm. pulses through everything mm -hmm. scientifically mm -hmm. and yes, the electricity. Know, yeah, I mean, there's vibration in everything, whether it's inanimate or not. It's just endless. Mm -hmm. I think we're all endlessly part of the same thing. We are. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. So that's what God is. That's what Allah is. That's what Buddha is. That's what Mother Nature is. That's what love is. That's what mm -hmm. unity of all all living things and vibrations is. Whether you're a hippie or you're a fucking devout Christian. So I kind of like see all of them as valid now. Because ultimately, if they can, if they're really true to what that icon or uh, uh, pinned concept mm -hmm. that they place around that idea, mm -hmm. um, then it, they should be just about the same things, which is unity and love. It's fucking, yeah. it's, oh, it's so possible. Did your concept of God change after your dad died? Uh, no, I mean, I've, I've for a long time, I just said, like, I'm a agnostic existentialist. Like, I think there's something bigger going on, and I'm some way mm. directly related to it, but sure. I don't know what it is. Then I took mushrooms. It was amazing. Mm -hmm. It was mushrooms amazing. Mushrooms are the shit. I was, uh, I was uh, like, you know, like, in The Matrix, <laughs> Andrew Tate fans suddenly getting excited. <laughs> he knows about The Matrix. Yeah, we have a big Andrew Tate crossover. I can tell. Course. Yeah, of course sure. you do. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> big Andrew Tate fans. He's there. They're huge. They love like self-flagellation. So they watch <laughs> you guys talk about how weak they are. Then they go and watch Andrew big them up. And they, yeah. and they jerk over yeah, both yeah, of them. Yeah, weak. Yeah, as aggressively. Weak. Yep, yep, yeah, yep. they finish to him though. Just yeah. so you know. That's okay. <laughs> I understand. Which is great. You get them hard. He brings them to climax. Yes. Which is, you know, they need that anger <laughs> as they cry. But, um, yeah, the, uh, uh, um, oh fuck, where was I? You met uh, psilocybin. Psilocybin, right? So the matrix, right? You know, the, the, the concept that their, their bodies are inside these little cocoons that are feeding machines, right? Mm -hmm. okay. So when they come out of the matrix, they pull that thing out and they I've wake never up. seen the matrix, but this. Okay, oh, wow. Okay. Movie. So yeah, they're yeah. effectively in incubators. Humans are kind of like grown babies in incubators from babies to human. Okay. And they, they're, they're energy powers machines okay. who keep them locked into a matrix through a little synapse in the back of their neck. Okay. Uh, so when they come out, they're like uh, coming out of this liquid and they're like, I'm in machine world. What the fuck? Effectively, I was like in that. I had, I had the the clearest understanding that my body is a vessel and mm. nothing more. I am not this. Yeah. Right, it's a sack. It's I'm a not skin fucking sack. this. It's, it's your skin car. It's, it's your a car bunch for of this organs. Life. Yes. Absolutely, it's, it's a vessel. Vehicle. It's the spaceship. It is your exploration. Uh, vessel mm -hmm. uh, and I've yes. kept looking for that I've been constantly craving exploring the cosmos not just because I take fucking drugs but because I'm also like genuinely interested I think that's the, the final adventure that we should already be on if the we could stars there are more stars in the sky than there are grains of sand on planet oh, earth that's I just want to get out and see what's insane. going on I want to you know beam me up all that business anyway I'm a nerd and I want to travel the universe right mm -hmm. and yeah, see dude. science but um, I understand that you, you know you have this that you have this body that is just a vessel, and then I sort of understood that uh, oh god I'm behind the identity even the identity Jeff Leach right all right what is that ring wearing Lothario esque uh, maybe reform Lothario fucking tall dude acts a bit cocky but then also self deprecates like, like is that it what am I right I'm more than that I'm more than that I'm more than that identity so that's behind that and I was in my amniotic fluids and then. 
I felt this presence. It was endless, endless kind of um, <gasps> network of synapses. So it looked like one of those, you know, those globes that you put your hand on and all the electricity oh, yeah, travels. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, it looked yeah. like that, but I was connected to all of them by all these little umbilical cords that are going from uh -huh. everything. Cords everything. of light, baby. Cords, cords of, of light. light, baby. And I closed my eyes and I felt this big energy moving over the top of the whole thing. And it was gargantuan. It was like, uh, you know, in Rick and Morty, show me what you got. Yes. Imagine that coming over the top. And I knew it was female. Mm -hmm. Hell yeah. I just God's knew it was female. Now, I've thought about that a lot afterwards because I'm not self-loathing as a man. I really love men. I think men are capable of incredible things and I think we're only just discovering our potential. It's going to be great to see what we do with vulnerability. Yeah. You know what I mean? Journaling, Honestly. man. It yeah. It can change you. So, um, but I could tell that this was, well, either it was female or the energy it was radiating is something that I identify with feminine energy, mm -hmm. which was uh, like fear I was incredibly fearful of it I was terrified at first petrified and then as soon as I went oh because it, it like looked to me it kind of went and like kind of sensed me and it sensed some shit was wrong with me mm -hmm. it was like and then I felt that light this big red light go from there all the way down one of the synapses into me and it explored it filled my body and it went like that once I let it in and it basically went oh oh you've been holding on to this repressed fucking anger towards your parents for 38 years oh um, yeah you yeah, have been yeah. Yeah. punishing yourself mm -hmm. since you were a kid you've taken on all of the screaming and shouting your parents did every fucking night because they should never have been together mm. and i'm getting tearful thinking yeah, about yeah. it mm -hmm. and i but it's joyful it's so freeing to go fuck yeah. i wasn't equipped to deal with that at seven years old yeah. like seven year olds sure. shouldn't hear their parents screaming and shouting fuck you you bastard fuck you you bitch and slamming doors every night mm -hmm. yeah that's not normal that's yeah. traumatic yeah and like it did all of that and it went but they were just trying to manage their own trauma mm -hmm. right and i now know so much about what my parents have been through and they've done a great fucking job to mm -hmm. not repeat their cycles exactly. Mm -hmm. So then it becomes a responsibility. Anyway, so this thing like went in there, sorted that out. I shit out a horrendously toxic liquids and then nice. flush that bad boy away. And I yeah. knew that I'd wow, released a real good 30 trip. years of yep. stomach issue. I've been holding my guts from it. Uh, yeah, yeah. Crazy. Yeah. And then I looked up online on gut biomes affected by psilocybin. And there's infinite studies about that. Um, yeah, that's awesome. Was well, he had a good trip? But it was a woman. It was definitely feminine energy. It was love. And then I danced, and I loved my body for a bit in the mirror. And I went, love, love, love. I kept saying, love, 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 love. It was great. Well, I'm surprised you could look I in felt the mirror. Empowered, yeah. Wow, that's great. Yeah, I can't yeah. look in the mirror when I do shrooms. Nah, nah, it's too. Mm, my, it's, my it's my I was like a pile unicorn. Of garbage, I yeah. felt a radiating like. That's great. Emanating. I've never done a hero dose. <laughs> oh, that feels like Molly, but yeah, that's. Fine. Yeah, it was great. I've never done a hero dose. I should. And How I sat long down did and that last? To my buddies. Uh, about six hours. There was okay. about six hour kind of. And were of other intense. people there? One buddy, yeah, my other buddy. He was doing it for work purposes. He was like thinking about his business. He's mm -hmm. a very successful oh, right. entrepreneur. And he was sitting there and just kind of going, I've got some, I want to think about my business completely differently. So he went to the book. It's so interesting, you know. Uh, I'm I'm reading this book now. I always I'm always reading like multiple books every week about like various subjects. Um, because I'm obsessed with like aliens and the afterlife and all this stuff. But one of them I'm reading is about electromagnetism and how um, um, really you could you could change the health of your body because everybody's body has everybody's cells have infinite healing powers and it's cre we all have the exact same electricity from the exact same source or whatever um and basically it, it, talk about everybody saying the same fucking thing and you're like oh wow this is the same themes themes are coming up the whole book so far is just about managing emotions right because every uh every organ in your body has um a charge electrical charge right and so and everything is electricity and so and your emotions and your thoughts there's been so many studies on the effects of a human being's thoughts not said out loud but just thought on water Right. Uh, and how it changes the molecular structure of water once it's frozen under a microscope, saying certain words, and you go, oh you my god. Do you we got fucking telekinesis and shit? We just we, haven't put yes. our minds to it. I mean, 100, Jeff. <sighs> yes, Jeff, we 100% I do. can't wait. Can you I, imagine? You have it already. Oh, I've sat as a child for hours and tried to move things. <laughs> I have too. Yeah. I have too. Yeah, me but like, too. But <laughs> life, life is about managing your emotions, and so when the, the, the trauma stuff, whether it's childhood 
younger, like you get traumatized as an adult. If that shit gets stuck in you, you will pay the price until you get it out. Like it's, but it's wild. because of emotional maturity. It's like if you never emotion uh, mature beyond a certain age, because yeah. you are kept there by certain things. For me, it was you know my parents were kids. They they never gone beyond that traumatized yeah. child. Oh wow! Oh, so yeah. they were raising children, but with traumatized child reactions. Yeah, for you know, sure. Blowing up all of a sudden, losing yeah. their temper. That's how they were taught like, to handle stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and so I realized I'd done the same shit, and that. Mm. But now, now I'm in a partnership where I, I envisage myself having children, hopefully soon. You know, and being married and, and having that kind of a life. Yeah, um, it's ten million times more important to me to iron out all of my kinks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, even what we talked about earlier. You know, I've never harmed a woman, but I absolutely was a douchebag when I was mm. younger in a lot of ways. You know what I mean? Because yeah. I was like just a fucking. Insecure, cocky, cocky, insecure, yeah, piece of insecure. Shit. Not a piece of shit. I didn't wasn't hurting people, but mm -hmm. I, yeah, I'd like Careless tell them, hey, I'm just a friend. We're just fucking in friends, and I'm never. But I knew someone might like me more than that, and You're I like would boy. I'd uh, still take them out, yeah, and treat them nicely. No, no, no dinners, and I wasn't a fuck boy, but I was missing. You, you I was. Fuck, you can go to a dinner with a fuck boy. I was misleading. <laughs> them. Sure. No, yeah. I was misleading. I misled yeah. a lot of women that there could have been a possibility of a committed relationship, right. and in reality, there wasn't. Right, right, right. right. Um. Which is not cool. So anyway, so unpacking shit like that, even being in a relationship with a with a black woman as well, you know, mm -hmm. a Latina woman, I'm like, I know I, I got to unpack all my complicit nature and systemic racism. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, yeah. how the fuck am I going to raise children sure. who are black yeah. and white and Latina yeah. or Latino, yeah. you know? Yeah, imagine being in an interracial relationship will really teach you a lot of shit that you would never learn otherwise. Yeah, and also you, you if you're white, you got to accept a load of shit. I had to just go, yeah. I, I've considered myself an ally, but nah, I just, just because I wasn't racist right. doesn't mean I haven't in the past. If it's anti-racist. Said and done racist shit, eh, mm -hmm. as a youngster, you know, encouraged, like, there was definitely points where we all mocked each other at school about, I was mocked because I was a gypsy, gypsy, you know, because I'm Romanian, yeah. you know, gypo. Uh, and oh, then I did that to Romanian? other kids. Absolutely. I definitely was guilty of that when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. Then when I got old enough to understand that was wrong i didn't but then i've definitely thought things yeah you know when i get cut off in traffic when i was in my early 20s or something by someone who's not from where i'm from yeah i've thought racist shit and had to undo that and work yeah. out why i would do that and then now it's gone to the next level which is if you don't call shit out when you see it yeah 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 you're complicit you're basically going oh, right. that guy's saying some racist shit but i don't want to get involved mm -hmm. yeah. whereas now i just go nah this is wrong you know yeah so yeah. it's continued reviewing what you've done and working out where you want to be, working out what those values are, right? Yeah. For everything, whether it's your fuck, your fuck life or your committed life or your business or your personal development. Yeah, you know? they're both important parts of, of a person. They're and all you're just out parts. there holding the fort down for the two of you, just <laughs> working your way through the brightest and best yeah. that New York City has to offer. You got it. <laughs> I'm just still thinking of like, so we, 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 what are the two other values? Oh, goodness gracious Loyalty, me. Val, uh, I can Loyalty, love, creativity. This, it's <laughs> Loyalty, love, creativity. It's driving me nuts. Loyalty, I've got to now try and remember them all. Loyalty, creativity, uh, creativity love, uh, family was one. Okay. And then also, um, oh, and also uh, ambition. Oh, okay. But my ambition isn't career related. It's ambitions that I have for my life. Like the things, I, I, I'm really competitive mm -hmm. um, by nature. And also I think by design, by my parents' design, you know, okay. 100% otherwise you're worthless. Yeah. So naturally you start becoming like that. Oh, I have that too, yeah. Yeah, which can be tiring for other people. Super fucking tiring. Oh, it's yeah. very tiring in relationships. You get a lot people. done though. Yeah, yeah, but also then, like you say, in relationships, it can if you don't work a way to moderate that. Yeah, suddenly it's like it's like well, I've done this, this, and this, and I just appreciate if you met me. It's like well, maybe if you were a bit more fucking relaxed, right? Ah, uh, there yeah. could be a compromise. Be here. present here. Yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. So I've been guilty of not being like that. Um, but yeah, I mean, and so when it comes to life goals, I know there's things I want to achieve mm -hmm. every year. I want to like learn a new skill or something new. I want to yeah. do something new. So. I'm going to do that. I want to be a great dad. That's an ambition that I'm yeah, really that's a great nice. ambition. dedicated to. Stuff like that. Great partner. Yeah, yeah. that's wonderful. Better comedian. <laughs> I have to write some jokes, I guess. Yeah, yeah, you got to do that for that. <laughs> Those sure. are good goals. Very admirable. Very yeah, admirable. Yeah. Yeah, you made you made a good pivot, I feel like. I know, but I've drained the fucking comedy out of the room, haven't I? Jesus Christ. No, been... no. 
notes. This has been like a self therapy well, episode. This is, this is we do that a lot though. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. sometimes yeah. episodes are like comics roundtables, but other times they're like, yo, what the fuck have you seen, dude? Absolutely. It's Let's also talk about literally it. January second. I feel like this is the kind of conversation that one People has on January second. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. Like what about? I love the energy of January because I'm like, what about my? It's it's, it's this improvement energy. Yeah. Like yeah. how how can I make myself better? How can I like get to know myself more? How or can not? I, fuck this year. It's gonna be exactly I've never like that. that. I haven't. But come on, the last four years, it's just been it's been ongoing. Well, the pandemic, I was like, this shit rules. Um, I love staying still like this. Yeah. It's great. Yeah. I don't have to worry about like being more competitive. I'm very competitive and like, but I get uh, like, a, you have you ever seen the videos of the fainting goats? I have they, they scream and then they, they like freeze up and they fall over. I, when I go get overwhelmed, I get like that. So that's why I love the pandemic. There you go. So you're leaving 2022 is for goats. Yeah. But 2023 is for a different kind of goats. It's for dragons. For dragons. There yeah. you go. All right. This one's for dragons. Yes. <laughs> dragons. Yeah. Nice. I thought you were trying to wrap it up. Sorry, he just gestured at you and then you looked at your phone. So I was just trying well, to because give text- it a natural I pause. I thought he texted me too. I, thought, <laughs> I also thought it was an hour and I was confused at what was going on because everyone was looking. But I also am looking this way. So Christina usually looks at my... It's all yeah. good. I got so much more I can say. But then again, that's because I'm smoking weed. Uh, and so I was trying to help you wrap it up. I thought that's what well, you there, wanted is to there do. Any, is, there, is there one more like topic you want to touch on that you feel is important for this for our conversation? I mean, what, for our add? new year, new me yeah, conversation? Yeah. Here's become a little bit of that. I, mean, I first, like that though. That's a good vibe. Yeah, I think it's, but it shouldn't be um, annually based. I'll tell you what, death of a dad. I did want to talk about yeah, that let's briefly. Yeah, talk about that. Let's go. Because um, I appreciate that you mentioned yours mm-hmm. uh, situation. A lot of people try and, uh, it's, it's a difficult thing to talk about. Oh, I talk about it nonstop and I've been talking about it on stage a lot. People are very uncomfortable. And so now I'm now angry at how un- how unwilling people are to confront. You're the like, only I'm ready to laugh at this. Why aren't happening? you motherfuckers? Well, it's also, it's so it's selfish of other people. I'm like, your, fu- your dad didn't die. My dad died. Yeah. Let me talk about my dad who you didn't know. <laughs> His, and his death. Yes, it's yes. It's insane. It's insane. Do, I, do and I've never you? had that problem. I, I remember, like, since I was starting, a little yeah. kid, I've always been very comfortable talking about death. I, like, got a, I got books on death. It's just always been something I've been fine with. I mean, because I am a little Wednesday Adams, But, you know, and not, like, not, like, fascinated, like, not, like, trying to die myself, just just truly interested. Maca- you like the macabre. Yeah. You're into the world I'm, of- and I'm and I'm okay with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a little goth as well. Like yeah. I'm wearing skulls. I got skull tattoos all over my body. Yeah. <laughs> mm. yeah. <laughs> so what was your experience like? Yeah. Um, I mean, it was heartbreaking. Mm-hmm. I think the hardest part about losing my dad is that he was a fucking brilliant man. Mm. And he did some dope shit. Like he did some exciting stuff that like was what? great achievement. Uh, so in the Royal Albert Hall, all of the sound uh, acoustics in the roof that was placed in to make it the perfect sound for the Philharmonic or- <gasps> Orchestra stuff. He designed all of that. Oh, wow. He that designed, so project cool. managed the Jubilee line. That's like the newest train line that goes across London. It was wow. like beautiful and safe and oh my super God. modern. He was, he's left a permanent impact on the city. Yeah, he That's did some amazing. cool, yeah, some That's cool really stuff. Cool. And he was a fun, cool guy yeah. who wore short shorts that his nuts often fell out of. Oh, that's great. And a great. silly little floral hat when we went on holiday to Spain sometimes when we were kids. Okay, this explains a lot of yeah. your dress. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it does, it and does. Your, and and at his whimsy. funeral, I made everyone, I got all these bucket hats, like flowery oh, bucket hats. Oh, I love that. And little pins that said, I sent Grazy on his Wazy. Yeah. Oh, his name, that's His name so was cute. Graham. Um, but my great. dad was like, he was a kind, loving dope dude who liked listening to fucking Rolling Stones back when they were like, when they first, you know, he was into great rock music. He loved DJing and that was his thing. And then he just got, cool. and then depression took over him, mm. you Aww. know, and it really sucks to see a man who was so brilliant and who I love, excuse me, so deeply. It's caused me gas. See, that's mm. how upset I am. Yeah. A guy who I like adored so much and who shaped so much of, you know, how I viewed what, what is a man? What is the concept of man? Yeah. Some of which was negative and I'm realizing that is, it doesn't have to be the blueprint, mm-hmm. right. but a lot of which I'm incredibly proud of, uh, kind of deteriorate mm-hmm. and he deserved happiness at the end of his life. And he felt, uh, resigned to accept his fate that there was no happiness possible for him. Mm-hmm. And that was heartbreaking because he didn't deserve that. Having said that also he's left great memories with me. So, you know, yeah. um, but finding the humor in it, I'm struggling with that at the moment. I'm starting I think it's to make too jokes. Soon. This was like really recent, right? Yeah, like I buried him less than a month ago. Yeah, oh my god! My best Jeff. friend three oh. days before that. Yeah. Yeah. No. That's oh too my recent. god! Your best friend three days. It's yeah, my best friend. Is, unfortunately, yeah. depression took him. You oh, know. Fuck. And then, and I, and realistically, I oh, say so depression hard. took my dad because yeah, he should have lived for quite a lot longer if he was treating his body better. Mm. Wow. And uh, you know. 
I actually had just left it on the bedside table. I just realized I had my, his little 24 hour chip, you know, and I carry that around now because I, I haven't had a drink for four years. So I'm like, yeah, it's, it hurts Shit, man. to like watch someone succumb to something that you conquered. Yeah. And I knew that he, I wanted to give him the same thing. I was like, dad, little therapy, some physiotherapy gets you back on your feet more. So you're out there, just embrace it, embrace it. Come on, please. But also I'm talking to a man who came from a generation, hard, hard working class, East London, mm -hmm. like, like you can't, you don't that. talk about your feelings. No. And then his dad's in the RAF going off and fucking blowing up Nazi submarines came back. Fucked. He came back mm -hmm. having experienced some shit. So probably mm -hmm. saw a lot of his friends get, killed in really nasty ways yeah and uh came back fucked up and then violence in the house a little a little and you know mm -hmm. that that informed his experience you know so he never grew out of being that scared little boy and it was never told like our generation has been afforded yeah that oh mental health it's good if you get control of that Oh, you, therapist gone. Go ahead. Yeah. Go and talk to someone. And even in England right now, it's still not where it is like in America. Yeah. Here you're too medicated, but at least therapy yeah. is not frowned upon. Right. In England, even therapy is a bit like, oh, what's wrong with you? You're fucking crazy. You're oh, mental. Sorry. A little bit. Yeah. Damn. And if you're black, you know, in that culture, yeah. getting control, you know, yeah, you're weak, you're soft, or it's tied to religion often. You know, that's yeah. what mm. I've experienced through my partner and her, her friends and her closest, nearest and dearest, you know. So I think we're going through this period that my dad was never going to be able to take advantage of because mm -hmm, he's just right. not from the he was from a different time it's also hard sometimes i, I notice like as i grow, grow older it's uh like you, you you there's a release that you have to just like have that like y your parents raised you but it's very hard to then go back and raise your parents even though you want to with the things that you learned across and you life. have to eventually because it, they do regress it, yeah yeah so like you have to take care of them physically but i think like it's very hard to like change the perception yeah. in the same way like and the, they'll di learn and the dynamic so between you yeah because and, and i i see a lot of um of children uh, like ha ha experiencing pain because their parents can't see this light that they discovered and i'm like well we're, we're all on our own journey you know yeah. we want to you know it's like you know you do want to like ram das walk each other home but it's 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 different so like you know your i think what your parents will learn is um through raising you but then you can't you can't then you go out into the world and you learn the things and it's very hard to take that knowledge and then bring it back it just doesn't work the same absolutely. way absolutely and it's okay. although i say that i mean my mum bless her she's in her 70s yeah. early 70s and my mum has done a lot of self applied therapy over the last few years wow. it's a lot of work yeah. um, that's amazing she might not be seeing someone and you know going down and, and i don't know if she ever will if that's sure. necessary but she wanted to have uh, a depth of relationship with us that she definitely has now yeah and she did that by doing some work on herself wow, and that's also amazing. the work i'm doing the work my sister's done yeah, yeah. you know if you're if you're dedicated to, to growth that's what yeah, it is, right? Possible, and, but you, but you can't, course. you really can't force your parents to be dedicated to growth. You can't. And you can't expect or anybody. It. Hey, look, there you go. The old AA right. adage, you know what I mean? Like uh, it, serenity yeah. to accept the things I cannot change. You yes. can't change someone else's opinions, mm -hmm. someone else's feelings. You cannot change that. You can't, yeah. you can impact on it by telling them what you feel and what you, what you think is the right way to be, but that's it. That's mm -hmm. what you can really do. And then, you know, that courage to change yourself and the wisdom to know the difference. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. Nah, but for real. Right? Yeah. That was amazing. That wow, was no, you were amazing. I'm so glad I came and had this chat with you ladies. Us Thank too. You. This was great. Where can we find you online and yeah. what would you and like to promote? Yeah, just at Jeff Leach, uh, J-E-F-F-L-E-A-C-H on pretty much everything, whether you're enjoying TikTok clips or uh, on Instagram. No, I put clips daily now on everything. I like TikTok, yeah. Uh, Facebook, I do live streams on there and on YouTube as well. I've got loads of videos up there, long form content. Um, but I've got uh, a very exciting, I've got a ton of really exciting projects coming out. I've got like four AAA video games this year. Nice. And then I've got a uh, massive anime series at the end of this month Oh, cool! and then a couple of more animated series coming out just after that but I can't tell you any of that shit yet because I'm well, under NBA's and three comedy specials you probably three make so much money three with your specials voice. three comedy specials you've been busy that's yeah. the best thing please keep watching or, or follow me because I'll be yeah. dropping stuff and it'll be free it'll be for everyone to enjoy yay that's yeah. wonderful amazing and keep Thanks, supporting Jeff. the ladies thank you thank you for stopping by uh, this has been Guys We Fucked the Anti-Slut Chimmy Podcast I'll talk to you next Friday <laughs>